Welcome back to another 20-year rebuild. Today, doing the New England Patriots, unquestionably the best team of the last two decades. They made the Super Bowl more than anybody. They won more Super Bowls than anybody in that time. And they missed the playoffs in 2020. They snuck in in 2021, lost in the wild card to the Bills. They just haven't been that same team. And I wonder what the common denominator is. It's Tom Brady. Tom Brady, not on the Patriots. Patriots aren't as dominant as they used to be. Not exactly a secret. But I got a question for all you Patriots out there. Let's talk about flag burning for a second. There's nothing like an extremely controversial and divisive issue to start the video. That's fun for a little mad in action, right? But you know how flag burning is, let's say, extremely frowned upon in the US? And you're not really supposed to be messing around with any of that mischief? Well, you're also not really supposed to be wearing any type of American flag clothing. No ties, towels, shirts, shorts, bathing suits, whatever. I'm sure there are a couple of technicalities that make it you know, not technically illegal by the letter of the law, but it's not proper flag etiquette, right? So let me ask you this. Is it then okay to burn American flag clothing because it's not proper flag etiquette in the first place? And I'm sure a lot of you guys know the Pledge of Allegiance. If the US is one nation under God, does that mean God hates flags? Let me know. All right, what do you say we get into this rebuild? So this is this is interesting because the Patriots offensive line in game actually looks pretty good. In real life, it's kind of a different story. And that, you know, can do with some injuries. Isaiah Wynn on IR also has an expiring contract. So that's something we're going to have to deal with. Going to have to end up replacing him. Trent Brown is like hot and cold. Cole Strange, I think, has done a pretty good job. David Andrews, Mike Unwenu, like it's a good offensive line on paper, but with injuries and guys getting older, Marcus Cannon, you really haven't seen them play to the top of their capabilities this year. Of course, we know the Patriots went big in that one free agency and brought in Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith and even Matt Judon, who's been worth every penny, might I add. Spent a first round pick on Mac Jones, who again has been up and down. Some people probably believe Mac Jones is the answer in the future, you know, franchise level quarterback for the Patriots. I don't really know where I stand on it. Mac Jones isn't overly impressive to me. I thought he was pretty good as a rookie, but I'm really not sure what the ceiling is for Mac Jones in terms of being, you know, maybe like a top 10 NFL quarterback. I'm not sure he ever reaches that. Damian Harris from Andre Stevenson is certainly a really good running back combo when both are healthy. And their receivers, I think, could use a lot of work with Devontae Parker, Jacoby Myers, Kendrick Bourne, and Nelson Aguilar. It's actually funny that Kendrick Bourne is the lowest rated receiver of these four because he might actually be the most important of the bunch. And then defensively, you know, we have some really good players here. As I mentioned, Matt Judon has played incredibly well, but so has Josh Uche. He has been incredible. I think you can call this a breakout year where Josh Uche, kind of like a hybrid outside linebacker, and he is a super fun player. Really good athlete, showcases some pretty good bend too, which I guess you'd expect from someone who's a little bit smaller at 6'1", 245, but he is a really fun player, and there are some really fun players on this defense. I mean, Matt Judon's been incredible, but Kyle Duggar is really evolving. Devin McCourty has obviously been a rock for a long time in the Patriots secondary. And then I think you've seen some really good play from their rookies at times too in Jack Jones. And we don't actually see him pictured on the screen here, but you know, one of the most fun players in the draft last year, Marcus Jones from Houston, electric return man. Now the Patriots have actually involved him on offense some this year. And uh, ideally he's going to end up being a pretty good slot corner too, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he just ends up being like a return man that sees some shots on offense and defense every so often but primary return guy kind of like i don't want to say i, I want to say kind of like devin hester but devin hester of course drafted as a corner really never ended up playing corner but i, I can't really think of a great comparison like because i don't know it's rare to find a guy that does everything but uh yeah i, I think jack jones has played pretty well don't love Jalen Mills. Jonathan Jones is pretty good too. 
and he is 28 though. But yeah, this team is going to change a lot over the next 20 years. If you've never seen one of these 20 year rebuilds from me, it's a combination of simulating and, well, I mean, it's a lot of simulation. It's not really a whole lot of gameplay. It's more about team building. But in the 20 years, you know, we might simulate three years in advance at one point. But you guys pretty much know where this team is. These seasons are going to fly by. We have a lot to get through in 20 years. As you can see, this video is probably like three or four hours long. It's probably ridiculous. So we need to stop wasting time. But I don't really think I'm going to trade Devin McCourty if there's even a team that wants him because he's 35. Probably not going to trade Jonathan Jones. We should have quite a bit of cap space to re-sign the guys that we actually need to. It's just about making decisions on who needs to come back and who needs to go. Because Nelson Aguilar, probably not going to come back. Jacoby Myers, not really sure. But Jonathan Jones, maybe for two years I would want to get back. I don't know. And uh, of course, this also will be uh, using auto-generated draft classes. Quick little sponsored by Underdog Fantasy Moment. These are my five picks that I like for this weekend's game. They're going to add a bunch more as we get actually closer to Sunday, but this is what I like as I record this on Monday night. Justin Jefferson, hate to pick against my favorite team in the Giants, but he's in a super favorable matchup. Some of the DBs he'll be going against, and he gets double-digit targets. Uh, Jason Pinnock at safety. Nick McLeod at corner. Maybe a little Fabian Moreau at corner. Are you getting the hint? Justin Jefferson should go over this line and probably pretty comfortably. You never know. It is football, but his matchup is incredible against a Giants team that's getting torched lately. I still am going to ride the hot hand to Zach Wilson and Garrett Wilson. Wilson has gone over all three of these games. A little bit tougher last week to do it. So I don't feel that great about the Wilson and Wilson plays. But the fact of the matter is the Jets are playing one of the worst passing defenses in the NFL in the Jacksonville Jaguars. I expect Wilson and Wilson to have a really good chance to go over. And Wilson went really clean over last week. And I guess so did Garrett Wilson. So hopefully they can get on the same page. And Wilson, the quarterback, can be a little bit more consistent. Daniel Jones against Minnesota playing, again, one of the worst passing defenses in the NFL. This is the worst passing defense by a lot though, especially lately. They're averaging 330 passing yards allowed per game. It's incredible. Daniel Jones has actually played fairly well this season. He's in a pretty good spot. The line is maybe a little high for me, but we've seen him throw for 300 plus yards against some of the league's worst passing defenses. So he's in a great spot. I'm going to play it. He's inside as well at Minnesota. So Pretty good matchup. And then Seattle's run defense has been absolutely atrocious. Isaiah Pacheco is really finding something on the ground here with the Chiefs. They seem to be trusting him a little bit more. 70 and a half, maybe a little bit high considering he's only gone over that once in the past three weeks. And it was last week against the Texans whose run defense is terrible. But Seattle's been equally, if not worse. So very, very bad uh, run defense means Pacheco's in a great matchup and hopefully getting more touches. So those are my five. The ones I like the most, Jefferson, Pacheco. So if you want to make a two-man, that's maybe your best bet. But use code BANGLE, underdog fantasy. They will deposit match up to $100. You put in $100, they'll give you $100 for free. Use code BANGLE, link is in the description. And thank you to Underdog for sponsoring this video. But basically my philosophy here, and we don't really know too much about anybody right now, if there is a quarterback, and there's only one projected to go first round right now, but if there is a quarterback that is night and day better than Matt Jones, I will heavily consider drafting them. I don't think we're tied down to quarterback, but at the same time, and I think you can probably understand this, I'm not really looking to replace Matt Jones. I want to see what this development can look like, but if there is a monster that we can potentially be in position to take, we're probably not going to hesitate. Probably not going to hesitate and just take, you know, the franchise level QB. But whether we actually see that in draft right away or not, that's another question. Strengths of the class are corner, D tackle, and wide receiver. We could use all three of those positions, really. But I'll probably change the scouts. I mean, we have a scout that does corner receiver at two star. We don't really have to change, I guess. Might as well keep it. We are four and three at the midseason mark. Doesn't really matter too much in the grand scheme of things, but Devin McCourty wants to return despite being 35 years old. It's possible. Jonathan Jones is a maybe at 28. Damian Harris, 
Also a maybe, we have Ramondre Stevenson. Running back by committee just doesn't really happen too much in Madden, but wouldn't be bad to have him if we can get him at a decent price. Jabril Peppers, he's 26, probably want to bring him back. Jacoby Myers, maybe as well. And then Nelson Aguilar, I might try and trade right now. Let's see if we can get anything, like a third round pick I would love. And then Isaiah Wynn, I would like to bring back. We have 87 million to get it done. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so I have some pretty unbelievable options when I add Nelson Aguilar, Devontae Parker, and a fourth round pick. Jalen Johnson stands out immediately. Cortland Sutton, JOK from the Browns. He really felt like he was a Patriot too. Just that type player. Just versatile, can do a bunch of different things. Coveted by Bill Belichick in a defense. Didn't end up getting to the Patriots, or Patriots did not draft him given the opportunity. He had a heart condition type thing that ended up making him fall in the draft. But we have some really... Christian Wilkins, another guy that feels like a Patriot to me. Um, we have a bunch of really, really good options here. I want to play it somewhat realistic, right? So I don't want to be too crazy. But at the same time, I'm getting some really good value. I mean, Brandon Cooks was a Patriot. Harold Landry just signed a huge extension. Patrick Peterson's up to an 85 overall. Wow. I will say this quarterback looks crazy. Damon Holland. Damon Holland has great two elite throw power with a deep accuracy, a medium accuracy. And I mean, who knows about short and under pressure, but he looks really good. If we can somehow get up to number one overall, it wouldn't be the worst decision in the world. And... The fact that Sean Newton has A press, A to C man coverage, but B zone coverage while being a man-to-man -man archetype tells me that he is going to be a very, very good player. Probably has A man coverage as well. This seems to be a really, really good draft class. And the reality is that we just probably will not be in position to get any of these guys unless we navigate the board really really aggressively historically the patriots are a big trade down team but i might be a big trade up guy in this first rebuild year round one to two power rusher deshaun carruthers with a power moves b finesse moves a tackle c block shedding is actually pretty good and he's a pretty good athlete too i know we have christian barmore but deshaun carruthers i'm not sure if i would hesitate to take him in that same kind of christian barmore range uh, in that second round. We know the Patriots love a good tight end. Dalton Foster looks really, really athletic. And uh, scouting report-wise, seems to be pretty good. I just don't think we're going to pick high enough to get to these guys. We'd have to trade up a considerable amount. I mean, even some of the tackles and offensive linemen look good. This class all around just seems phenomenal. We got Cam Chancellor. Cameron Chancellor. I know Cam Chancellor spelled Cam with a K. But kind of a fun name. Would be cool if he had A hit power, which he might. Jerry Gary is a crazy name. I don't I don't care. <laughs> if you are named Jerry Gary, I, I, I you know, I don't apologize. That's an insane name. I have to call it. Max Bat I mean this class looks nuts. A safety with A man, B zone, B hit power, round two to three, that's a good athlete overall. I don't know how I'm going to draft. I have no idea what's going to happen. Okay, making a trade. Nelson Aguilar and Adrian Phillips. Hook em horns. As well as a fourth round pick for the projected last pick of the first round from the Colts. Number 32. So, not that valuable of a pick at this point. But I'm hoping that becomes more valuable. Aguilar was not going to return. Adrian Phillips was not going to play. He's an 83 overall, which is great. But we don't need that many backup safeties in the 80s. They just won't have any impact and i'm still probably going to try and trade Devonte parker because this appears to me to be such a stacked draft class i want more ammunition to potentially trade up and in order to do that i need more picks and then Devonte parker and jalen mills are headed to pittsburgh for the number 35 overall projected pick but it is just a second round pick in the middle of the season right now i'm kind of embracing the tank even though we're four and three but i don't really think anyone that i've traded is actually a big contributor because we still have great depth like if you look at wide receiver we still have jacoby myers kendrick Bourne. that's a fine one and two it's not really a huge downgrade when we had Devontae parker at 81 overall nelson aguilar contract year at 80 overall not really anything has changed i might need some more depth at receiver but i feel like we are still just as strong 
uh, at those positions. And they're probably something decent here in free agency. We'll bring in Dolphins franchise legend, Preston Williams. Number of decent players in here, the former Patriot, Philip Dorsett, Ola B.C. Johnson, Kiki QT. Some of these guys I didn't even realize were free agents. Maybe they're not in real life. They just got cut in the game. Some of them I, I know for a fact are, but I know Djax is on the Ravens, right? Did he get cut? No, he's on the Ravens. He's on the Ravens. And it's actually kind of fun to do the 20 year rebuilds because you have to be way more conscious about the deals you give out. But Jonathan Jones is someone I want to keep around. A four year deal is not bad. I'd love to lower the money, but when you do that in Madden, they just say no. So he doesn't want to resign. Might work something out there. Damian Harris wants a long-term contract. Something I'm not really all that interested in. I guess I would do this deal, but they all want a higher bonus. Now, Jabril Peppers, I would pay. He's only 26, star dev, 26 years old, as I mentioned already. Uh, 83 overall, did want him back. And then Jacoby Myers, I think, has to return. He's a little bit more expensive than I would want but he's gonna be a really solid receiver two or three for me long-term. If he's my receiver one, we have a problem, which right now he is. But a four-year deal is something I can deal with and Jacoby Myers returns. And then Isaiah wins the big one. He is 26 years old, star dev, near an 80 overall. He's someone that regardless of how well he plays in real life, just will be a really good option for us here in the game. A five-year deal is what I'm gonna do. I could have, you know, gone as high as seven. The rest, I'm not really too interested in. But, I mean, Devin McCourty, he's, uh, he's so old. He's so old, dude. All right, one year deal for Devin McCourty. Devin McCourty returns. And we actually end up missing the playoffs, going seven and 10. Dolphins and Bills really just had huge runs, I guess. Because we were, you know, in a pretty good spot around the midseason mark. And then it's a really awful second half of the season. We only had one win and it was over the Cardinals after our bye week. Uh, pretty horrific, pretty awful. It was because of all those trades you made. It just happens in Madden, it's, it's bizarre, the sim logic. But Mac Jones had a really good season. 4,700 plus yards, 32 TDs, 12 picks. Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson were a huge combo. 12 rushing touchdowns for Harris, 18 for Ramondre Stevenson. What is this? Interesting. Do we need Damian Harris? I don't know. Jacoby, Jacoby Myers was good. Hunter Henry was great. Kendrick Bourne was somewhat productive in his role. And then defensively, Jabril Peppers actually led our team in tackles. Also had six for loss. Dietrich Wise had 15 for loss, 12 for Judon, who had nine sacks, seven for Wise. And uh, Lawrence Guy at two and a half. Barmore didn't do much. Probably will end up changing the playbooks. Devin McCourty, three picks led the team. A very interesting year. I'm not really complaining about our huge downfall in the second half. We did have the number three offense in points per game because we just have an opportunity to draft some really great players as a result, maybe. Not saying for a fact, but can we really rationalize taking that quarterback? Maybe the corner, maybe the corner. Wow, Chiefs dropped a 50 bomb in the Super Bowl over the Bears. Lamar Jackson wins MVP. Garrett Wilson and Devin Lloyd, rookies of the year. Von Miller, Cooper Cup, players of the year on each side of the ball. Okay, last chance to re-sign some of these guys. Damian Harris is up to an 85 overall. Uh, I just don't really want to pay a running back this much. This is the best I can do. He's gonna hit free agency. I'm actually okay with that. I would consider a franchise tag at 12 mil for one year, but I could absolutely not uh, extend him long-term. I just don't think it's worth it. For Jonathan Jones, it's too much money, but for a two-year deal, I'm down from four now that he's 29, I'll do two years. Jonathan Jones comes back, but we need an upgrade at corner, and it's not gonna be with any of these players, so. Damian Harris, we have 78 mil. I am going to franchise tag him to keep him around. I don't want to give him a long-term deal because I want flexibility down the stretch if we need it. But when we have this amount of available salary cap, I can afford a 12 mil franchise tag for a year and just, you know, bring in one or two guys in free agency. I know there aren't going to be too many good players in free agency year one, but as things go, the players pretty much get better and better and better. 
TJ Edwards could be a good addition. As predicted, don't really love any of these options. Offered TJ Edwards a two-year deal. Don't really need him one way or the other, but would be an upgrade. And then James Bradbury would not be bad on like a two-year deal. Has interest in the Patriots. And we'll see if we can bring him in. Seems like it's going to happen. Hunter Henry up to superstar dev, by the way. And he's, what, 28 years old now? 28. So there's a little bit of room for improvement there. He'll pretty much just retain his overall. The fact that Ramondre scored 18 touchdowns and is not star dev is insane. And then defensively, Matt Judon goes up to superstar X-Factor. Jabril Peppers goes up to superstar. Devin McCourty surely retired. But this team, not too bad. It probably will move to a 4-3. Uche and Judon will slide down. Barmore will move over. But we could still stick to a 3-4 also. And just go like Giants playbook or something. I mean, this QB is going to be really good. QB is going to be really good. So we didn't get James Bradbury or TJ Edwards. But Bradbury is still a potential for us. And we do end up signing him. So James Bradbury for two years will be a New England Patriot. And... I don't think we're going to do anything else in free agency right now. Just save some of that money and go to the draft. So private workouts, I'm really tempted to bring in the top two players. I actually don't know where we pick right now, but there are so many different players that look really, really good. The smart thing to do is really get a better idea of some of these prospects down the board, but I really am interested in some of the top players in the draft. So we actually pick at number 11 overall. Lions, Texans, Lions is your top three. Seahawks, Jags. I mean, a lot of those teams I could see taking a quarterback. So if we want the QB, we're going to have to trade him. He's a top five talent in the class. He has A deep accuracy, A medium, A short, A throw under pressure with decent overall athleticism and an elite arm. A throw under pro. I mean, dude, I have to draft this player. I have to move up to one. Now, Sean Newton, I can also say, is probably a top five talent in the class as well. I would love to move up for both of them because we know Sean Newton, for a fact, is going to be an unbelievable player. For a fact. A man, A press, B zone. I'd love to get both of them. That seems pretty impossible. But. I think this has happened before in a 20-year rebuild where I just kind of threw a little bit of realism out the window to move up for what seemed to be close to two generational players. So I might try and do the same here. If I can get the first and second pick in the draft, I'm going to do it. The Lions will take a quarterback. They want to take a QB. Can I get one and three? I will give you Mac Jones. <laughs> Mac Jones is going to be the way to get it done. And it's, it's going to have to happen. To pick at 11 and 20, I will, I'd probably have to give them both. And even so, I don't think it's actually going to work. Let's see how close it is. It's actually pretty close. Okay, this is a huge trade, but it's happening. I know 20 year rebuild, oh, the unrealistic. We've seen crazier stuff happen, but man, I got to go up and get an unbelievable prospect. Mac Jones in number 20 is gone to the Lions in exchange for number one. Mac Jones is only 24, 76 overall star dev. There was something there that we could build with, but I think Damon Holland will be better. He doesn't have 85 throw power the way Mac Jones does. He probably has closer to 95 plus. Good overall athlete with just every key rating you would want. Only 21 years old. He went to UCF, which is where the boat went. Blake Bortles, it's a match made in heaven. Damon Holland at number one. Welcome to the team. 97 throw power, 80 speed, change of direction and agility with 84 acceleration. I had to. I had to do it. This is our next Tom Brady. Now Tom Brady didn't go at number one. He went at number 199, I think. So a little bit of a different spot, but I mean, that player looked incredible. And now I want to move up from 11 to 2. Because Sean Newton looks incredible as well. It has to happen. And if I'm right, this video could essentially turn into following the career of a generational quarterback. Let me try and get number two. We have 11. Then we don't pick till 38. What can I give them? We don't have a quarterback to give them. Bailey Zappi. Could give them an interior offensive lineman. 
I don't really want to, though, is a thing. Other than maybe David Andrews? And that's actually going to be the trade. I know, get over it. Number 11 and David Andrews for number two. It's a weird trade. There are good centers down the board in this draft. David Andrews is only 31. It's a fine age in Madden for an offensive lineman. He'd probably retain his overall pretty well, but he's not going to be as good as he 22 overall. You know, superstar caliber corner in Sean Newton. Yeah, he struggles to find the ball in the air. Don't care. We're taking him. A man, A press, B zone. Welcome to Foxborough, Massachusetts. 91 speed, 91 jumping, 96 change of direction with 89 agility, 95 acceleration. I think he's going to be a beast. We know he is A man and B zone. That's already sweet. A press. Going to work in our system really well. He's a beast. And I think we probably got the two best players in the draft. Yes, we had to take them at one and two. Not exactly incredible value there, but he just looked really, really good. And uh, Randall Grimes is here. He is a receiver who I liked. 5'9", 188, 22 years old out of Florida State. B catching, B deep route running, B release with great speed. Elite change of direction, great acceleration. Don't really know too much about him as a receiver. I don't really care about catching traffic because he's a deep threat. It's going to be naturally a little bit lower. There's potential there. I mean, this corner, Jason Rudolph, also looks pretty good. Probably will not draft him, but I like the look of the prospect quite a bit. B-man, C-zone, B-press, pretty good. Do I take Deshaun Carruthers? I probably do. I probably do. And then we can take Max Batten down the board if we want to go safety. A couple of good centers available. I think I used my focus scouting on Noah Rubin, who has is a power archetype of B-pass block. Good athlete. We're going to get better this draft by a lot. So let's evaluate what is the most important position for us right now. Center, certainly. Defensively. Defensive tackle is very much in play. Don't need a corner. Safety maybe down the board. Linebacker down the board. But do we need receiver? It's receiver or defensive tackle. Bourne, Myers, Thornton. Uh, who's, it's going to be who's better. Randall Grimes or Rashawn Carruthers. I think they're both going to be good. The question is who's better. Or Deshaun. I called him Rashawn. Deshaun Carruthers. A tackle, a power moves, B finesse moves. I'm going to go Deshaun Carruthers. Ends up with hidden dev, 86 strength, 75 speed, 77 jumping. Doesn't matter. 79 acceleration. Seems good. We'll have to get a better idea about him when we see his actual ratings, but was that the right decision? We'll find out. Randall Grimes does go with the next pick, and then there goes Cam Chancellor, but I really wasn't considering him. And then uh, here with our last pick of the second round, it is between maybe the free safety Max Batten, who I definitely like. Really good athlete, too. I think I just got to take this guy and not think twice. It feels like there are a lot of really good centers down the board. Is this guy far and away the best one available? You know, I'm not really sure. Looks really solid, to be fair. But I am going to go with the free safety in Max Batten. Seems to be a really versatile player. B-man, or excuse me, A-man, B-zone, B-hit power. Feels like a really good cover safety. Welcome to the team. Only normal development. Fine with it. He's going to be back up right now. 92 speeds, great. 89 change of direction and agility. 86 acceleration. Seems good. And I think if we wait until the third round, there goes John Lynch, GM of the Niners. There goes Noah Rubin, who I was looking at. I don't know. I think the players I want are going to be off the board here in the third round, but we'll simulate there. There is one center available, a D tackle and an outside linebacker. I think I'm going to go center, who has normal dev. Hate to see that. The only reason I draft offensive linemen is to get hidden dev because it's tougher to get. But we'll go we'll go with the center, Justin McClain. And then I'm going to go with the outside linebacker if he's still available. I should have just traded up. I've already traded up so much in this draft. I should have just done it again. But I didn't do it. And now both players that I had left on my board are now off the board. And this immediately turns into an obvious trade down spot. Rams are going to give me a third round pick next year. Let's do that. Velvario Barker, that is a name, let me tell you. I don't see too many Velvarios out there. I'm actually going to take a quarterback here in the fifth round. Calvin Sharper from Texas State is A, throw under pressure, 
B medium accuracy, A to C deep. He's a strong arm type with actual pretty good athleticism overall. Will never play for us, but does have hidden dev. 87 throw power, 80 speed, 85 acceleration, 86 agility. Is he better than Mac Jones already? <laughs> Not that it matters. We'll have the CPU deal with the rest. But now we have three capable quarterbacks on roster, including Bailey Zappi, right? So good draft for us overall. Didn't get everybody I wanted, but I think it was a pretty good class overall. And I think we've done quite well. Damon Holland is an 81 overall quarterback out of UCF. 97 throw power. Accuracies are in a pretty good spot. Throw under pressure at 79 is pretty good right out of the draft. Um, yeah, feel like he's pretty good. Average sense of pressure and aggressive forcing passes I don't love. But that's okay. Sean Newton is an 80 overall. I think we've done really, really well there as well. Not sure that any of these guys are generational, by the way, but just very good players. Sean Newton, I think he looks really good. Carruthers is only a 72, but Max Batten is a 75. McLean is a 72. That's fine enough to start. Decent tight end down the board, and Casey Fenderson from Louisville as well. Sharper is a 63. But there will certainly be a role for Batten. Only normal dev, but is a high overall. Great zone and man coming out of the draft with good hit power too. I mean, I think that's actually a really good pick. And then Carruthers, 72 overall, I would say is slightly disappointing. Does have power moves into the 80s though. He's definitely good. And let's see what we missed on. So this left, or excuse me, right tackle, Frank Carlisle, looked really, really good. One of the better tackles I've seen all year in the overall matches that. Pass blocking, run blocking, and then the power, run block and pass block in a really, really good spot. Great strength. He looked awesome, and that is that is a really good tackle. One of the better ones I've seen all year. And then it, it's a big drop-off from these guys at 81, 80, 79 to 76. And Dalton Foster looked pretty good, but we would never have spent that high of a pick on him. Another good safety down the board in Lenzel Killings. Juan Brewer actually considered drafting. Ended up just trading down for a third, but we didn't really need uh, running back too much. Lawrence Santucci I considered. I considered a lot of those different centers. He's a 75. I want to find the players I actually passed on, though. Ruben is a 75. Probably would have been the move at center. Yeah, he looks really, really good. If he has superstar dev, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed for sure. I think we made the wrong decision anyway. We should have traded up for him. Does only have star, but I still think that's a bit of a missed opportunity. And then that receiver we decided to pass on in, what is his name? Randall Grimes is a 73 overall. Does have hidden dev. Pretty good speed. Route running is not too great. Change of direction and agility is super high. Is he playmaker archetype? He's not. He's deep threat. Hmm. He looks pretty good. Would have been a nice receiver to have. Does have only star dev, though. I don't know. Even if this quarterback only has star dev, which is certainly in play, we got an 81 overall quarterback that's plus five overall on Mac Jones, who's three years younger. It felt like a no-brainer. Oh, and Fenderson actually has star or better development. 6'6", 255, he's a blocking tight end. Not a bad third tight end to have. So I know it looks like, ah, oh, Sean Newton, CB3, but Jonathan Jones is 29. James Bradbury is in his 30s. He will have his day, and he's going to be, you know, a starting corner for us in some capacity. If you want to count the nickel, he will start as our nickel corner. We need better receivers. I like the running back situation a lot. Carruthers will end up playing. I think we're going to stay in a 3-4. And Batten could actually play a little sub linebacker over Juwan Bentley. That'd be interesting. Don't think I'm going to do that, though. We're just going to see what happens in this season. It's a transitional year for us, but we are an 84 overall. I think it stands to reason that we could easily be a playoff team in a competitive AFC East with the Jets and, of course, the Dolphins, Bills, maybe being the best of the bunch. This will be an interesting season. And we're one in five, actually. So really, really bad. About as bad as we could have been up to this point with only one win. And there's a breakout challenge for Jacoby Myers. I don't think he's going to end up, be, you know, getting to superstar dev. Uh, one in five is pretty crazy. We have the number 10 offense in points per game. Our defense is horrific. So Giants defense is not getting it done. 
Are the Jets in a 4-3 now? I think they are. So we can't take their defensive playbook. They're having a great season. The best 3-4 defense in terms of points per game is... I mean, I think the I mean the Steelers for sure, but I think the Lions might be 3-4 to this point. But do I want to actually run Lions defensive playbook? I don't think I do. We're just going to stick in what we're in for now, and, and hopefully we see a turnaround in the second half of the season. Will we make the playoffs? It seems not, but the strengths of this class are wide receiver, which is certainly what we need. Kyle Duggar has to return. Damian Harris, I, I'm still in the same spot I was last year. Trent Brown, I think we're going to try and re-sign. Hunter Henry's a free agent, as is Mike Onwenu. Uh, yeah, these are these are some big free agents. They really are. Duggar, five-year deal. The, he, wants, he wants less security, okay. Trent Brown, three-year deal. It's super expensive, but he returns. We need a good tackle, and he fits the bill. Mike Onwenu could potentially move out to tackle at some point. He's played it in the past. He's pretty expensive, but we bring him back as well. Can't bring back Josh Uche just yet. Want to be able to save money for him. Juwan Bentley's a little bit more expensive than I would like. There is interest there. I'm going to try to take the salary down just a little bit. And we bring back Juwan Bentley long term. Hunter Henry. We just can't afford to give everybody, you know, four or five year, year deals exceeding 10 million annually. It's just not good. I'll make an exception for Hunter Henry. And he returns. We're running out of money. I know we have 32 mil. It doesn't seem that bad. But it's also not that good. And we end up going 2-15. and 15. We were atrocious. Our offense actually dropped to the 26th ranked scoring offense. Our defense climbed all the way up from 32 to 31. We were atrocious. Maybe the worst team in football, which has to be entirely playbook related. Offensive playbook will change. Defensive playbook will change. We bring in one of the best rookie quarterbacks I've seen, and we let him down, really. 4,349 passing yards, 34 touchdowns to 17 picks. He does have superstar dev. This was the right decision. We just haven't seen the results just yet, but he looks like he's going to end up being incredible. Rushing, Damian Harris improved quite a bit. Overall touchdowns went down considerably, but they were a little bit more productive individually uh, on the ground in terms of yardage at least. Jacoby Myers was good. Hunter Henry, good. Kendrick Bourne, quite good as well. Tyquan Thornton, actually pretty productive as well. And then defensively, 140 tackles for Jelani Devai, 8 for loss, but 15 from Judon led the way, who only had two sacks. Our leading sacker was Jelani Tavai with three and a half? We got zero pressure. Five picks for Bradbury, cool. We got no pressure at all, and we do have good pass rushers. Disgusting season. We're moving on. Eagles beat the Titans in the A.J. Brown Bowl. Jalen Hurts won Super Bowl MVP. Patrick Mahomes, regular MVP. And the Lions had a tight end that won Rookie of the Year. And the Cowboys with a middle linebacker, Daquan Rich. That does seem like a linebacker name. And we do need to bring some players back. Kyle Duggar. Damian Harris is still a maybe for me. Josh Uche, certainly. I would hope that he was, you know, developing a little bit faster at this point. Still want him to return, though. Four years. I probably do... I probably do five. And he should sign that. Josh Uche will be a Patriot for a big part of his career. Kyle Duggar, I want back. I'd probably do four years now. He was right on four years. We go ahead and do that. Kyle Duggar's back. Kendrick Bourne is regressing. Not, not going to do it for me. Damian Harris, I don't want to give you more than three years. I could do three years. I could do three. Up the money a little bit. We could make this work. Damian Harris is back. Three-year extension. I think that is, is a good contract for us. And nobody else is expiring other than Anfordy Jennings and I think one other player in there. We still have a decent bit of available salary cap. We are going to have to pay this quarterback. We drafted a boatload of money in the future. So I need to be a little bit conservative with how I spend that money. Because he will be expensive. Holland right here will be incredibly expensive. And I just saw something pretty interesting as well, which I'll talk about in just a minute as we get throw accuracy short up by three. The rookie tight end that the CPU drafted has superstar development. 
He's a blocking tight end. I don't really know what it means for us, but he's only, he's 23. We got something there. Janu Smith might be on the block, might be on the trade block. We need receiver badly. And then defensively, okay. All right, all right, all right. Sean Newton has superstar X Factor. We made the right decision with drafting him. That much is obvious. Incredible pickup. Great to see Sean Newton have superstar X Factor. Huge draft pick. Carruthers has star. Bradbury is up to superstar. And Jabril Peppers is up to superstar X Factor. Jelani Tavai up to star as well. A lot of things will change, but we have pieces. Nick Bosa is here. Feels like a Patriot. <laughs> And he is a Patriot in some ways, to tell you. Uh, Nick Bosa, man. What do we do? I don't really think we can offer him. It would be awesome to have. I don't think we can do it. Obviously not going to go quarterback. Trayvon Diggs is here would be a big pickup. What about wide receiver? Michael Pittman could be the one. Nobody's offered him or Mike Evans yet. Brandon Ayuk might be the best one because of age, alongside Gabe Davis, I guess, but... A lot more interest with Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk is really expensive, but I think he's going to be worth it. I think he's going to be worth it. Probably the only player I'm going to target here. Logan Wilson would be a good pickup, though. Patrick Queen is good in the game. Rashawn Gary is a beast. We just need to save money. Like There are a lot of players I'd like to go after. Ed Oliver, Derek Brown... I just don't know where we're going to be financially if we do some of these things. Ed Oliver, we might be able to get for fairly cheap. And this would give us the flexibility to potentially trade some players. I'm going to offer Ed Oliver. I'm not going to pursue him too much, though. Tristan Wirfs would be huge. Nobody's going after him. Oh, my goodness, man. Tristan Wirfs is just a franchise tackle. I'm going to offer. I'm going to offer. So... I'm going after Chris Hubbard because he has the mentor tag. That's designed to get Chris uh, Tristan Wirfs. Ayuk, Ed Oliver, who I don't think we're going to get. And we'll see what happens. Ed Oliver remains. Chris Hubbard remains. And we've signed Tristan Wirfs and Brandon Ayuk. Okay. So Hubbard, offer withdrawn. Ed Oliver. Dude, I said I'm going to be conservative and I'm, I'm offering so many different players. We did not get Ed, Ed Oliver though. Maybe for the best. Maybe for the best. Janu Smith is going to have to go. Matt Judon's regressing. I mean, I guess he is 32. Jonathan Jones is regressing. I'm looking at the players we can save money on. Devon Godshaw is going to go. It's a new era. Out with the old, in with the new. Wow. Number one tackle in the class looks really good. Obviously, no need for him. We have... Oh, he looks incredible. He looks, he looks like the best tackle I've ever seen. He looks incredible. I mean, we, do we have the number one overall pick? Am I going to talk myself into that? He looks like a generational tackle. Also, wide receiver is the strength of this, of this class? Doesn't really look like it. No one really looks to be impressive at all to me. All right, so we have some tough decisions to make. We'll start the NFL draft and then we'll think about it. And we do have the number one overall pick. Man, that pick has a ton of value. That offensive lineman looks incredible. Trent Brown is regressing. Got to keep that in mind. 31 years old. I did sign him to an extension, though, is the thing. He is under contract for three years. He is going to end up getting traded. Now, we do have Isaiah Wynn in behind him. We just signed Tristan Wirfs. Isaiah Wynn is 28, and he is under contract for four years. Really reasonable price. On Wenu could go to center, and Isaiah Wynn could slide inside a guard. And then we're looking at a Trent Brown trade and replacement. We got Brandon Ayuk. That's huge. Man, that tackle just looks like the best player I've seen. I know we need help on the defensive line. We need an edge rusher for sure. This is actually one of the more difficult decisions I probably made in the draft this year. Because Conrad Jones just looks incredible. He is the best tackle I've seen in the draft this year, I think. Or right up there with him if he's not the best. 
Dwayne Griffith, an edge rusher, looks really, really good as well. Okay, I'm making a ridiculous trade. Trent Brown, Jonu Smith, and number one overall are headed to the Commanders for number two and number 34. So I'm kind of salary dumping Jonu Smith and Trent Brown. I'm moving down one spot and acquiring number 34 in the process. I like the trade for me. I do. And even if we don't draft the tackle, because edge might just figure to be a more important position, we still have Isaiah Wynn. We still have Tristan Wirfs. We're good. Commanders go with the quarterback, Tevin Green from San Diego State. We have the number two overall pick. I just, I think I'm going to go Conrad Jones. He just looks like the best player in the draft to me. I'd never take tackle, but the fact that we can get one who's 22 years old, that looks like he could be, you know, one of the best players on our offense for his career. It's just too much for me to, to pass up. 92 strength, 73 speed, 84 acceleration. Maybe a little bit lower than I expected overall, hidden dev, but I just think he's going to be well worth it. He looks amazing. And the only thing is, will I regret taking a tackle over an edge rusher when we needed edge? Potentially. Donovan Burks could be the pick here. We do have back-to-back -back picks, so it could do a number of different things. First one will be Donovan Burks. Looks to be just a really, really solid overall player. I'd say he's probably a deep threat given his speed and his archetype. But that being said, with elite agility, I think he offers a little bit more than just being able to run fast. Does have hidden dev 97 speed, 94 acceleration and agility, 89 change of direction and 85 jumping. Only 5'9", but we know how smaller receivers have performed in Patriots offenses of the past. So not really super concerned with that. And then Spencer Simpson from Ohio State is an interesting player. Would definitely fit the bill for a 3-4 defensive end. If we move to a 4-3, probably plays defensive tackle for us. Has bad speed, but it would be okay for a defensive tackle, but elite strength. Has A play rec, A block shed, B power moves, B tackle, B awareness. Is he worth the pick here? I think so. Only as normal dev, a little bit disappointing, surely. Good strength and acceleration. Was hoping for hidden dev. In the third round, there are still players I like. They're all defensive tackles with A finesse move and C block shedding. We don't really need defensive tackle, but that last pick wasn't all that great. But these guys all look really good. We could reunite the Ohio State teammates in Javier Frey. George McIntosh is going to stay available. So here's what I'm going to do. We pick in 10 picks. I'm going to trade down for a second rounder next year from, I mean, so many different teams wanting to make it happen let's do it with the raiders and we'll just take whatever defensive tackle is available and uh the only one available is philip cherry so let's pop our cherry here and go with philip he's got normal dev good strength and speed this fourth rounder will turn into a third rounder surely let's do it with the 49ers really interested to see the overall of this tackle i'd guess high 70s 79 is really good. 79 is a really, really good overall for a rookie tackle. One of the highest I've ever seen. And he looks really, really good. Well-rounded. I think that was the right decision for us. Donovan Burks is a 75. Simpson's a 72. Cherry's a 70. And then we have depth down the board. Nobody looks particularly impressive, though. And then as far as the entire draft, we got the highest overall player by two overall points. And I think we did quite well overall. Now, there was a receiver. It's hard to tell with some of these guys, like especially a playmaker type. Like, how could you tell this guy was actually good? I don't know. I'm going to move Cole Strange to center. And I'm going to move Conrad Jones to left guard. There will be a change at some point where I think Isaiah Wynn probably ends up playing guard for us. But he's a scheme fit at tackle right now. We'll continue to develop him. So Jones will play left guard for the time being, which is kind of always a nice thing for a rookie offensive lineman to do anyway. Donovan Burke's good wide receiver three. Team is definitely coming along. I like the offense. I think the offense is pretty much completed. And then defensively, you know, we still need help at a couple of different positions, but gotta say, I like where we are overall. It's more like it. We are five and two at the midseason mark coming off a week seven loss against the Seattle Seahawks, but 5-2 and two is much better. This is a significant improvement from where we were, obviously, a year ago. 
and our free agents shouldn't be too big. Judon doesn't want to come back. James Bradbury is uh, getting a little bit old. Jonathan Jones, same deal. Ramondre doesn't want to come back. Jelani Tavai. Man, there actually are more than I expected here, for sure. Two-year deal for Matthew Judon. He wants to hit free agency. I'll probably allow him, honestly. He's just a little bit too expensive for my liking. James Bradbury on a two-year deal. I would do this really easily. He's not considering shorter deals. Well, you wanted a one-year deal. I gave you a two-year deal. Madden's broken. What's new? Jonathan Jones, no. Ramondre just continues to be a good backup for us. Don't want to pay him too much, but this isn't too bad. And Ramondre Stevenson is back on a four-year extension. Jelani Tavai returns. And then Christian Barmore is kind of a tough one. I think I think I would be comfortable with a three-year deal. He wants a lot more than that. I'm not willing to do a lot more than that. Godshaw is going to be gone. Going to make a move for DeForest Buckner, Devon Godshaw, and Jonathan Jones are gone. Third round pick leaving as well. We're getting DeForest Buckner back. It's kind of a rental. I don't think he's locked up long term, but he's a lot better than what we had. And he's really expensive, but it's kind of like a salary swap. He's just going to hopefully help us in this playoff run. It's the trade deadline. We're going a bit crazy. And I think that's a really good pickup for our defense. And Christian Barmore, I considered moving. I don't think anything's going to get done there. And did we not make the playoffs? 10-7. and seven. Bills won the division. I don't think we made the playoffs because we certainly don't have a first round bye. Very disappointing, but Damon Holland was incredible. Over 4,600 yards, 43 touchdowns to only nine interceptions. He might take the leap to superstar X-Factor. Starting to look like an incredible player. What a season. Damian Harris was really good. Ramondre Stevenson was a great complimentary back. And then receiving, Ayuk had a great first season. Hunter Henry was really good. The rookie Donovan Burks was super productive. I don't really get why it didn't work out for us. It had to be a defensive thing, and I think it probably was, although Matt Judon put up 15 and a half sacks. Great numbers. We just we just didn't get it done. I, I don't really know what else to say. We didn't we didn't win. You can put up all the stats you want. Number four offense and points per game. Number five defense and points per game. We didn't make the playoffs. I mean, it reminds me of the Chargers when they had the best defense and offense and didn't make the playoffs. This is insane. I mean, how is this not a playoff team? That's that's uh, pretty unbelievable. Chiefs beat the Giants in the Super Bowl. And when I used Giants playbook, it sure didn't work. Mahomes wins MVP of the Super Bowl. Josh Allen season MVP. TJ Watt, defensive player of the year. Saquon, offensive player of the year. And then you can see Kurt Sheldon and Dwayne Griffith were your rookies of the year. Dwayne Griffith was, I think, the edge rusher I considered, right? Does have superstar dev, but probably got it for winning the award, if I would bet. Yeah, so he had star dev. Didn't really miss out on much there. See, players ready to negotiate. DeForest Buckner, Matt Judon, who's down to an 83. Bradbury down to an 83. Uh, no one really wants to come back. We have a ton of money. DeForest Buckner, I think I'd like to extend, though. Very low risk, three years. Mm, I would give him two years and a little bit less money. And DeForest Buckner actually returns. That's a good contract for us. Judon, he had a great season. He's 33 and he's an 83 overall. I can't pay him 20 million per year. Can't do it. Bradbury, no. Barmore's the only one who I'm on the fence about. And I really just think he's a little bit too expensive. I would offer him this contract. And Christian Barmore returns. Free agency, we have 71 mil. We are looking for franchise difference makers. Devontae Smith would qualify. Although I'm really looking, I think, for a big time edge rusher. None at right outside linebacker. Aziz Ojolari is the closest we've seen so far. I just can't bring back 33-year-old Matt Judon. Just can't do it. Can't bring back Dietrich Wise. And none really at left end. Burks, by the way, had star dev. Hunter Henry goes up to superstar X-Factor following another good season. Holland stays at superstar. And then uh, Jones had star dev, unfortunately. Was hoping for a bit higher. Corner. Corner becomes a need. Batten is up to star dev, by the way. Remember the normal dev safety we got? Corner's a need. Don't really find defensive end to be a need at all in our 3-4. 
because Deshaun Carruthers will move over. He's probably better suited for defensive end in a 3-4 anyway. Defensive tackle is not his game in a 3-4. Just too light, more of a pass rusher, whereas you're really looking for a nose tackle at that position, a D tackle. I think we're looking pretty good overall. Linebacker is something I'll consider, but it's edge, primarily edge corner. Receiver, probably not worth it. But the options are good. See, JC Horn being here is exactly the type of player I want. What does he want? He wants a mentor at the position. If you just don't sign right away, that would be awesome. Because what I can do is sign AJ Boye to like a veteran minimum contract. It's not what this is, but it's not too bad. But I can do actually the same with Nikel Roby Coleman. All right, let's see how this goes. Well, we got JC Horn. That's a pretty good start. Now we no longer need Nikhil Roby Coleman. J.C. Horn signs five years, 42 and a half mil, $25 million bonus. Uh, and I really wanted John Simon to sign so we'd have a better shot to get his ease. Harrison Butker we will get. I'm going to change this contract a lot though. Just we need a big upgrade at kicker. That should be enough to get him. All right, we got John Simon. And now the interest on Aziz Ojolari goes up incredibly which makes me want to go ahead and change this around because I don't really want him on a super expensive deal but I still think we can get him anyway if I just can change this just a little bit three years up the money a bit that should be enough to get Aziz Ojolari and we'll see in the next week if it is oh, we did get Aziz Ojolari Good deal, and Harrison Butker should sign on as well, and he has. Really good free agent class for us, and also John Simon, but he helped us get Aziz Ojolari for cheaper, so overall I think that's pretty good. We still need edge rusher. Our team is starting to look amazing, we just haven't really turned it into results on the field just yet, which is obviously the big issue. I still think edge is a need, but we are in a position where we can really assess the board in a BPA style best player available rather than drafting for need. Just take guys that could potentially impact the team in a positive way, but linebacker, edge, defensive line, probably at the top of the board. Okay, Zach Gant's the guy. I've seen enough, I've, I've seen enough. A finesse moves, A power moves, B block shedding. He's the guy. Zach Gant is potentially generational, I think. Seeing A finesse moves, A power moves is extremely rare. And this receiver is also a freak. Broderick Wiley, A catching traffic, A release, B catching. He's going to be really good. Elite jumping, elite strength. Ooh, he's going to be good. But I'll tell you right now, there's no point to draft a defensive end if his name is not Zach Gant. That's the best one in the class very easily. Probably the best player in the class. I will trade up whatever it takes. I promise you, whatever it takes. Browns have the first pick. I'm not letting them get another Miles Garrett. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> I'm not going to let them. I'm sorry that it has to be the Browns, Bill Belichick's former team, but I, you can't get Miles Garrett V2. He's great athletically in everything. No elite anything, but he's going to be insane. Will be absolutely insane. I would bet easily a 79 overall, if not higher. Yeah, you can't, you can't have another Miles Garrett. Now, it says they don't need defensive end really it's our fourth need i guess they kind of do the question is what will i give up to make this happen oh no we're projected to have the number one overall pick next year that essentially makes this a cheat code um you know maybe we are going to be that bad but i don't see it i'll give them a first rounder next year and a third and we have moved up to one now again it, that's a mistake but the game thinks we're going to pick at number one overall. That is an answered prayer, essentially, because it lets us get this player, Zach Gant, not for free, but essentially for free. 22 years old, out of Ohio State, another great Ohio State edge rusher. You know, you have Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa, Chase Young. Now you have Zach Gant. Welcome to the team. He's going to be incredible. 89 strength is already great. 84 speed, 85 acceleration. 83 agility, not to mention A power and finesse moves and B block shedding. He is going to be ridiculous. Only one player we could ever take in this draft here. And then we have a bit of a tough decision here at number 18. 
Linebacker is a bit of a need. I'm not sure that there's any like bona fide difference maker. Ben Farrell looks good. I don't know that I want a good player. I really like drafting great players, and I just don't. I don't really see that with a lot of players remaining in this class. John Betts is on my board. Supposed to go maybe in the second round. Another defensive lineman. I keep taking these defensive tackles, but he looks good. We just really haven't drafted that freak yet, unfortunately. Chiefs are offering me a first round this year and next year. First rounder at number 32, of course, this year, next year. I'm going to do it. We're going to move down from 18. Maybe they're not a Super Bowl caliber team next year. We can hope for that. And uh, we get another first rounder to replace the first rounder we didn't have from a year ago. So I'm pretty comfortable with doing that. The defensive tackle is still on the board, as is a linebacker I was looking at. I am going to go... I don't know. This linebacker looks, again, pretty good. I'm more comfortable taking a pretty good player down the board. John Betts will not make it to my next pick. Zach Flemons probably won't. Brian, or, or Byron Skinner, maybe not as well. I think I want at least two of these players. If I can get a pick at the top of the second round, I'm going to try and do it. Okay, this is the trade we're making. 32 moving down to 36. We're trading that quarterback we drafted, if you remember, in year one as star dev. And a third round pick next year in exchange, of course, I talked about the, the pick swap. We're getting a second round pick and a fourth round pick next year from the Packers. I think this trade down is the best decision for us. And uh, we'll reevaluate the board here. We have the potential ammo to move back up if we want to do that for maybe a, a linebacker as well as one of these defensive tackles is do I want the the pass rusher with speed or do I want the pass rusher with power I'm gonna go John Betts hidden dev finally 81 speed I don't know if those pictures match he okay um looks good other otherwise who no, Eagles have Jimmy G at quarterback now tough scenes I'm going to move back up. We have two second round picks. Don't think we'll need both of those. Two of four to five to move up. We're not moving up a ton. Yeah, so that trade's going to be accepted pretty easily. And we're going to take the linebacker here at number 37 overall. And it could potentially be a starter for us in a couple years. John Skinner is not his name. Uh, Byron Skinner is. He has 88 speed, 91 acceleration, but only normal development. Better athlete maybe than a football player at this point, but he looks good. So I think it's just normal dev trait, which could go up to star, of course. You guys know how linebackers get upgraded all the time. Ooh, a Cardinals 2026 round two pick. We'll trade out of this spot and simulate to the end. Draft recap. I mean, I'm convinced we got the best player in the draft. He is a 79 overall, as I think I predicted, although I did say at least. I, you know, I thought there was a chance to be in the 80s, but... Really, really good player. Probably the best in the draft. Ooh, there's actually someone higher. It is that receiver that I said was going to be a freak, Broderick Wiley. Receiver just wasn't as big of a need for us, but he's certainly a really good player with 97. Spectacular catch. Really, really good player, but I am obviously really comfortable with the player we got. Certainly fills a need. And then after that, kind of a big drop off in this draft class. What do we even need on defense? I don't know. I like where we are. Gant and Carruthers as rush ends over Ojolari and Uche. I mean, Gant for sure. A little odd, I guess. But if that's the best for us, maybe I leave it. We are 6-1 and one at the midseason mark. Bucks 0-7, oh kind of a tough season for them. But we're doing great. On track to make our first playoff appearance. Zach Gant, is your dev trait revealed? Survey says, star. Ah, come on, man. Why can't we be better than Star? Sean Newton with plus one speed, by the way. 92 speed now for the third year corner. And we finally make the playoffs. First round by going 12 and five. Nice to see Joe Burrow, 5,400 yards passing. Damon Holland, not too far behind. Another amazing season, just shy of 5,000 yards passing. 42 touchdowns to only nine interceptions. Damian Harris was awesome, as was Ramondre Stevenson. This is an electric backfield pairing. 
And receiving, Brandon Ayuk was amazing. 20 touchdowns. Hunter Henry was still very good. Jacoby Myers, Donovan Burks, good as well. But it's the Brandon Ayuk show here in Massachusetts. DeForest Buckner, 12 tackles for loss, led the team. Barmore and Gant with 11. And 13 sacks from the rookie, Zach Gant, led the way. 11 and a half for Buckner. Very, very good numbers. And then five picks for J.C. Horn. Great stuff for, for Sean Newton. We have a great cornerback duo. I mean, we are playing really, really good football. We've got a lot of really good players now. Number one offense in points per game. Number seven defense. This is what we've been waiting for. Bills in the divisional. They snuck in at nine and eight. Third AFC East team to make the playoffs, it looks like. Uh, actually, no, I, I misread that. Uh, so maybe only two teams. Jets at 8-9 probably did not make it in. But we crush them 48-24. Move on to the conference championship against the Tennessee Titans. And hopefully beat them as well. And we do 31-14. And now it's a Patriots-Seahawks Super Bowl. We've never seen this before. Except for when Malcolm Butler jumped in front of Ricardo Lockett and picked off Russell Wilson to secure a Patriots Super Bowl victory. So we have seen it before. First Super Bowl, Justin Herbert is their quarterback. Okay. First Super Bowl here in this 20-year rebuild, though. The Patriots have won, what, six all-time? I think they've won six. We're looking for number seven. Yes, Patriots have won six. Tied, of course, with the Steelers all-time. This would break the record. Let's see if we can get it done. Our quarterback, Damon Holland. Looking to defeat Justin Herbert and the Seahawks. Not a great start. Seahawks already up 14-3. 17-3 now. We might have to jump in sooner rather than later to keep this a game. But we've tied things up at 17. Going to the locker room. Take the lead in the third quarter. Defense starting to show up. Offense showing up as well. Fourth quarter action. Steelers are not in the game. It's the Seahawks. Seahawks tie it though. And we're going to have to punt. And that's a three and out for the Seahawks. We're jumping in on offense here. Let's see what we can do. Damon Holland is our quarterback. I got to remember that name. We're going deep. Make a play. All right. We're not. Kind of tough to expect to uh, to bomb them like that. Ooh, nice broken tackle, Damian Harris. Kind of, ex or kind of, you know, you can't really bomb cover three is what I'm saying like that down the sideline. That's what I wanted to say. It's uh, we're we're beyond it now. Three minutes to go in the game. We don't need a score right now. We can definitely eat this clock a little bit. As we'll find Hunter Henry. It's a first down. They're actually in prevent. What they're going to do is completely allow Damian Harris to get wide open. Or the tight end, Hunter Henry. Superstar tight end in motion. We're going to run the ball. We found space. Damian Harris, one-on-one. -on -one, trying to go through Jamal Adams. We're in field goal range. But... I want the touchdown. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Henderson. Nice run. Is it? Why do I feel like his name's not Henderson? Because it's Fenderson. That's right. Fenderson. And we get kind of tabletop by, I think, Cole Strange. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was, uh, it was our rookie left tackle that we moved to left guard. No longer a rookie, of course. But there's Fenderson again. He's still on his feet. Only a minute left. No timeouts left for Seattle, so all we need to do is choose this clock, kick a field goal, and we're going to win the Super Bowl. Run up the middle. They're pretty much giving it to us. Damian Harris down to the two. We're going to turn off two clock, and we're going to let this tick down. And um, maybe back-to-back -back QB sneaks. QB sneak number one. Damon Holland is into the end zone. Touchdown. And that could be the Super Bowl victory here for the Patriots to make it seven. Are we doing a little race here? Oh, it's a, it's a sack race. Okay. Seahawks will have one final play. Justin Herbert going to have to throw it farther than he can throw it here with pressure. Uh, but he does have time. He has all day, in fact. He'll lob it up. Just knock it down. Pass fall is incomplete. And the Patriots... Have won it all. Seventh time hoisting the Lombardi Trophy. And first time without Tom Brady. The Patriots have won it all. Damon Holland at quarterback. Brought in Brandon Ayuk. Brought in Aziz Ojolari. J.C. Horn. DeForest Buckner. 
Of course, a number of Patriots have stayed on this team as well. But we got Brandon Ayuk in. What a big win, beating Justin Herbert and winning it all. Season recap, you guys know what happened, but Joe Burrow won MVP. We did have the Rookie of the Year, though, in Zach Gant. Damon Holland also won Super Bowl MVP. But I think Zach Gant should go up to Superstar Dev following, you know, winning Defensive Rookie of the Year. He's actually going to go up to an 84 overall here probably as well. He should have Superstar, and he does. He is upgraded. So this is looking like, you know, an even better pick right now. Damon Holland goes up to... He had plus one throw power, not that he needed it. He goes up to a 91 overall, in true overall, playing up to a 94, of course. Accuracy is looking great. He's got a cannon of an arm. He's a beast. Plus three zone coverage for JC Horn is very nice. Is Jabril Peppers regressing? He just turned 30. He has superstar X Factor. And he is somehow getting worse. Why, though? Why? Why? Nicole Strange at this point is already 28. Um, you know, I don't know if we need Cole Strange. I give him a three-year deal. We don't necessarily need him. Testing free agency is fine. All that means is Mike Onwenu slides to center. Isaiah Wynn goes to guard. Jones goes back to a more natural right tackle position, I think. And we're looking for an interior offensive lineman. Ayuk is up to superstar dev, by the way. Or we could just keep Conrad Jones at guard where he's done a really good job. And uh, have Isaiah win. Stick a tackle. When his contract is up, Jones will move outside. We'll pay him as a guard, hopefully. And then we can just sign a center. That might be the better way to do it. And then defensively, yeah, things are looking really good. Horn, superstar dev. Ooh, John Betts has superstar X Factor? I should have known when we saw this... This combination of, a, uh, of, a, uh, I don't know, like, image and then actual face in the game. If we look at his face here, that's not what we have. We've changed him to what he actually looks like. Superstar X Factor, 75 overall defensive tackle slash end is very interesting. We, I mean, surely have to get that guy involved somehow question becomes where and also ultimately how the franchise tag on Cole Strange is 13 mil might be worth it for a season just because we're not really going to need the money that bad could bring him back in free agency but I don't want to do anything long term Jabril Pepper's probably going to go at this point he does want to come back though so maybe Maybe he ends up being like a franchise tag and trade candidate. He's going to return on a two-year deal, which I think is fine. We will actively seek out his replacement, though. DJ Moore is here. Iki Aquanu. Tariq Wolin would actually be kind of sick. What did I say we needed? Interior offensive line. Looks like Ezra Cleveland is going to be pretty easy to sign. Three years. I mean, he'll be exactly what Cole Strange is, really. Uh, it's okay. I mean, Wolin wants to be here. This could be the easiest signing we actually have. 27 years old. Four-year deal to be our third corner. It just feels like it's going to happen. Well, we got Tariq Wolin. Did not get Ezra Cleveland. Still have a need on the interior. Nick Harris is here. Alex Kappa might be what we end up settling on after not getting Ezra Cleveland. Two-year deal actually works out really well for me, and I think we're going to be able to get him. Best offer by a mile. We bring in Alex Kappa. So Tariq Wolin has been upgraded purely as a zone corner, and now I'm starting to wonder if this isn't our Jabril Peppers replacement at free safety, and I think that it might be. I think that it might be. This linebacker, Jarek Campbell, could be the one. Looks well-rounded. Only 21 years old, elite speed and agility at the position. Is the fourth linebacker on the board. I like that a lot. Randall Ballantyne also looks pretty good. I'm a little bit worried about poor acceleration. But I think we are probably taking a linebacker. I think one of those guys is going to fall to 21, surely. Otherwise, we're going to be in rough shape. But... Remember, this is not our pick. Justin Blackburn looks pretty good too, but I am going to end up taking Jarrett Campbell here at 21. He looks like the best one. 
does have hidden dev, 90 speed, 86 agility, 88 acceleration, middle linebacker of the future for sure. This is our next Gerard Mayo, Dante Hightower. I am in. Middle of the second round, I'm not really even sure what we would do here. I feel like we put ourselves in such a great position where, I mean, we don't really have a team need. Is that, is that crazy to say? I think it's true. I'm gonna go with Lonnie Darman here. Hybrid style safety, really good athlete. Only normal dev. Damn, we have that many second round picks. Probably should trade at least one of these down. Thought about going corner, because if if we move a corner and Tariq Will into, you know, uh, free safety, we don't really have a lot of depth there. But I just didn't see anyone I liked, so I ended up taking that other safety instead. I think we're going to trade down, maybe package both of these second round picks for something next year. Trading two second round picks for number 31 overall next year projected by the commanders. And I think we're just going to simulate to the end of the draft. Let the CPU kind of fill out the roster. I really like what we've done in this one. Got trade offers for Batten. Oh my goodness, I kind of forgot we had him on the team. He's good. Do I really want any of these players? Probably not. Tell me this middle linebacker is sick. 75 overall is really good. Darman's a 74. Sawyer's a 73, a tight end. There's a corner who's a 73. CPU continues to draft really well for us. I wanted a third tight end. Does have hidden dev too. We got a lot of good depth at tight end like that. And then Tyreek Bass, only normal dev, but is good depth for sure. Now, Jarek Campbell's the one I'm excited about. Hidden dev, 75 overall, already a great overall at just 21 years old. 90 speed, tackles great, hit power is okay. Coverage is pretty good, has a bunch of traits. It's a good player. Draft class did have an 80. Running back Cordell Foster, I looked at him. Thought he might have been the best player in the class, but obviously we were never going to take a running back, uh, and especially not that high. But yeah, looks really good. I'm tempted to start Campbell over Jelani Tavai, to be honest. I don't think I'm going to do it, but I want to. <laughs> I really do want to. We just look like we have a really good team right now. I'd love to get Betts more involved. He just has a lot of developing to do. So I really can't do much at this point, but... Would like to get him involved. Got to make him a more complete player. But he could end up being a force for us. And I think when we end up re-signing him, we're going to be able to get a superstar X-Factor player at a really, really good value. The team just looks great right now. Only four and three. We do have trade offers. Just not going to consider those. Four and three is atop the division, but it's not really where we want to be. Damon Holland continues to get better. Do improviser. He'll move up to a 92 overall. Creates a lot of different things. And I like the accuracy a lot. Throw on the run and throw under pressure both go up. Yeah, he's a beast. Damon Holland will be a free agent. He will sign a massive extension, as will Sean Newton, who really doesn't want to be here. Why? He wants a higher historic record. Our win percentage is only 47%. Well, we just won the Super Bowl, man. Also wants a mentor at the position. We can just sign one of those. Zeke is just sitting in free agency, by the way. <laughs> As is Jack Jones. We'll bring Jack Jones back. And we'll sign Anthony Brown because he fits that mentor description, which should give our superstar X-Factor corner a little bit more interest. All right, so Sean Newton's interest actually doesn't really go up very much. I think we'll have to wait for the next week. But Damon Holland is going to be the big one. Damon Holland is going to be extremely expensive. Does have an interest in being here. I'll give him whatever he wants. Welcome back. Seven-year extension. Got a breakout quarterback challenge? Okay. I mean, he could go up to Superstar X Factor. I kind of don't think it's going to happen, but it's possible. He's been unbelievable. Did we have a mentor at the position? Why is that not being factored in? Now we lost 28-14, so he's not going up. Yeah, no shot. Kyle Duggar actually just had a pick six on Derek Carr. Just watching the game right now. Huh, good thing we gave him that extension. Let's send him to the playoffs. Another 12-5 season. Unfortunately, we are playing in the wild card this year. Conrad Jones will continue to be upgraded. Damon Holland is still putting up good numbers, but we just can't quite find the unbelievable numbers. And I'm not really sure what to attribute that to. Probably because Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson keep getting so many touchdowns. An elite amount of yardage from Damian Harris. Damon Holland 
Five rushing touchdowns, pretty cool. Brandon Ayuk was amazing, 17 touchdowns. Just overall, similar production from what we've seen, although Damian Harris put up a ton of yards. Jelani Tavai led the team in tackles. 20 for loss for Zach Gant and 14 and a half sacks. Barmore was great too. 16 sacks from DeForest Buckner would lead the way. Great stuff from our defense. Didn't really force too many turnovers, at least not interceptions, but just really good numbers again for most of the team. Number one offense, number eight defense. And we're playing a really good Browns team. We could be out of the playoffs here early. Wouldn't be shocked if we, yeah, lose. <laughs> 31-27, headed to the offseason. The Chiefs with nearly another 50 bomb in the Super Bowl to another Super Bowl win. No Patriot anywhere here. Joe Burrow wins MVP. Okay, players ready to negotiate. Sean Newton still does not have a big interest. We have a mentor. Like, you're an idiot. I'm going to end up franchise tagging him and then... um renegotiating it's only slightly more expensive than what we'd be paying anyway but i want more of a steal on him so he's franchise tagged damian harris at 30 and regressing will walk same thing with DeForest buckner jacoby myers maybe i bring back for another year he's a little more expensive than i would like but it's not it's not too bad jacoby myers returns but we'll be looking for his replacement batten i want back and batten is back five years deshaun carruthers is a good player. We just don't need him. But Casey Fenderson is somebody I want back. I would prefer if he was a little bit cheaper. He's going to test free agency. I'll probably try to get him back in free agency. Wow. A lot of good free agents. Trayvon Walker could be cool. Thurman Rose. I remember seeing this guy because they go, oh, Texas. Hook him horns. Who is this? Superstar X Factor safety that I can get for essentially nothing. Say less. I'm in. All right, let's see what we can do. I'm offering Thurman Rose, and I'm offering Donovan McPherson. New teams in the mix on, on Rose. We did get Donovan McPherson. He was really cheap. And I think we got Thurman Rose as well, and we did. Okay. Our team continues to get better, and it was obviously already really, really good. Money is now becoming a problem. We are going to fix it. Paying a ton to Sean Newton. Kyle Duggar paying a lot, too. Aziz Ojolari will be gone. Barmore could be gone. Jawan Bentley will be gone. But overall, the team is good. Oh, we didn't get that tight end back. That's okay. We have Sawyer. We're fine. Just a, a little bit of a loss there, certainly. But, I mean, look, look at the superstar X-Factors all over the place. McPherson is going to start at free safety, maybe? Campbell only had star dev, by the way. Which is, I guess that's fine. Trade declined. Uh, I'm giving you so much. It's going to be Christian Barmore, Aziz Ojolari, and a third round pick for Jerry Judy. Second round. It might even be, have to be a first, to be honest. Okay, interesting one here. Juwan Bentley, Jabril Peppers, and a first gets me Aiden Hutchinson and a second round pick. It's an interesting trade. Hutchinson is going to be an Aziz Ojolari replacement. And yes, we still have Aziz Ojolari, but I think Aziz Ojolari is about to be traded to the Broncos. And that's exactly what happens. Number 47, this would not have worked with the other second round pick. So it's good that we got that. Aziz Ojolari, Christian Barmore for Jerry, Judy. Our receiving core is upgraded. Jacoby Myers will be leaving after next season. I'd like a real difference maker, but I think that's overall a net positive with all those trades. I, I really think so. All right, we could definitely use another running back, but the team looks pretty amazing. Offensive line looks pretty good. Could use another running back, obviously, but the defense is great. And then should be able to get, yeah, Aiden Hutchinson and Josh Uche out there. McPherson is a new addition at free safety. Wolin's going to stay at corner, I suppose. And then we just need bets to develop. Rose and Gant, great edge combo. I mean, in a 3-4, they're not exactly edge rushers, but Gant will probably be a rush end and probably Aiden Hutchinson as the other one or Rose. And then we have good depth and then probably Jarek Campbell over Batten. NFL draft time, we are pretty much where we've been. I think back-to-back -back number 21 picks. 
Running back. Ooh. Derek Simmons kind of looks to be the best, just from having a bunch of A's in there. Not a bad athlete either. Not crazy, though. He's a power back. I mean, a lot of what the draft is, is replacing what will become more expensive players with cheaper guys that can develop into being that same player. So I know based on the contracts we've given out and the players on our team, we're not going to be able to keep all of our stud players that we've handed out money to. We're going to be in a tough financial uh, financial situation. So we really have to continue to draft really, really well and get these guys in line to be replacements before they actually ever have to do it. So these drafts, even though they might not seem to be all that important, are maybe more important than ever because we will be losing star players for a fact. We draft a center. Kyle Stevenson looks pretty good. Hidden Dev could potentially start at center for us. I know we're going to have some turnover. Alex Kapp is not going to be around forever. Didn't really expect to take a center round one, but it's just how it worked out. And Derek Simmons is the top available running back. He will be my pick here as well. Only normal dev, but he is going to be a rotational back with Ramondre Stevenson. I think he's actually pretty good. 73 overall center, 73 overall running back, 72 overall left guard. Pretty good draft for us overall. Marco Brown does have hidden development as well. So that's pretty good for us. And then let's see, are there any really great players you missed on? Not really. Worst class we've seen overall. There is a 77 overall center though. I'll be honest, I really didn't look down the board. I, I really talked a big game about this draft being so important. I took a center. I didn't even look at centers on the board. I just took them straight from the main screen. So missed out on a better center significantly. Kind of a miss there. Stevenson and Brown, though, are good dev guys. If we lose, you know, on Wenu, Win, Kappa, we got some guys that can step in and, and do a good job for us. Receiver, Jacoby Myers will be gone, but we have Burks. And then defensively, I don't know what's going to happen. We can't pay all these guys. Newton will be the really, really tough guy to hold on to, but we're obviously going to try to. I mean, we haven't paid JC Horn in a while. This year, I think we're going to have a lot of expiring contracts. And Newton is coming up. Aiden Hutchinson's on a one-year deal. Kyle Duggar's on a one-year deal. Hunter Henry as well. Jacoby Myers, Conrad Jones. They're not on one-year deals, but they have one year remaining. Even Burks is on a... Uh, one year to win to buy okay five and two at the midseason mark bills and dolphins both one and six yikes we have 93 million in available cap room oh man still no mentor at the position did i not resign the mentor uh we're players in here that i would trade these these are expensive players kappa we don't have to worry about uh jelani Tavai, i would trade so I don't think that's going to matter too much. Making a big move at the trade deadline. Alex Kappa, Jelani Tavai, and a first round pick for JOK, Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa. He's going to start at middle linebacker for us. And I don't know if his contract is expiring, but I know he's an upgrade over Jelani Tavai. Think about the DeForest Buckner trade we made earlier in the year, or earlier in the rebuild, I should say. We're just getting a really good player that helps us win right now. And we're basically just trading Alex Kappa and a first to make a huge upgrade at a really important position on our defense. So I'm okay with it. Yeah, losing the first round pick is tough. Definitely agree. But I think Jeremiah Wusu koromoa is going to be worth it if he helps us win a Super Bowl. Clearly. Okay, finally Sean Newton actually has interest in being here. Five-year deal. You know what? Mm, Six-year deal. No. Seven-year deal. <laughs> Sean Newton is back long-term. Kyle Duggar on a three-year, I think, is good. He's back. I can't really picture paying Hunter Henry at this point in his career. Maybe maybe a one-year deal. Don't know if he's going to accept this, though. Not considering shorter deals. Could potentially franchise tag him. I can't give Aiden Hutchinson this money. I know we traded for him, but I, I just can't. Can't rationalize it. Maybe a two-year deal. All right, Aiden Hutchinson back for two years. Okay. Conrad Jones, I'm going to give a six-year deal to because I think he's eventually going to play tackle for me. want to keep him while he's cheaper. Donovan Burks is really not expensive at all. Six-year deal for him. And then we can't bring back Isaiah Wynn. I've already made that decision. Kobe Myers, no. Hunter Henry, unlikely. 
made the playoffs at 11 and 6. And the last time the Patriots played the Giants in the final week of the regular season, they won that game and went on to lose the Super Bowl to the same Giants team. This time, we lose in the last week of the regular season. Maybe this means we win the Super Bowl. Don't know how I got to that, but that was the year the Patriots were perfect in the regular season and postseason until one giant loss. Damon Holland, great year, rushing. Obviously took a bit of a step back with no Damian Harris. That certainly makes sense. Receiving, Brandon Ayuk was amazing. Henry had 14 touchdowns. Eight touchdowns for Jerry Judy. Jacoby Myers, pretty good too. And then defensively, JOK led the team in tackles, but there's carry over there. John Betts, 23 tackles for loss and seven and a half sacks. That is a breakout year. That's a breakout year. I wish we could sign him to an extension tomorrow. Unfortunately, you just can't do that in Madden. Zach Gant led the way with 14 sacks, though. 18 TFLs. Thurman Rose had 20 tackles for loss despite only four and a half sacks. Not a ton of sack production, but just good stuff overall. Four picks for Batten, and then three for Duggar. Kyle Stevenson at center does have star Dev. We do have a chance for a superstar, though, with that left guard that had hidden Dev. Now, he most likely has star development, most likely, but there is a chance. There is a chance. We don't know it yet. We still don't have X-Factor on Holland. We'll get it eventually, and then defensively, we got X-Factors all over the place. I mean, this is a sick team. Can we beat the Colts? This should be a win. I don't I don't think the Colts should be beating us here. 42-28. I mean, it's so dumb, dude. 93 overall against an 84 Colts team. We lose by double digits. Dumb. Broncos beat the Panthers in the Super Bowl. Seen that before. Josh Allen wins MVP. No Patriots in there for any awards. We really haven't had that many, to be honest. Our team has played pretty well. Just haven't really racked up any type of accolades. Henry's down to an 86 from an 88. Myers is going down. Isaiah Wynn we already talked about. He's 32 now? Yeah, 32, Jesus. We are in a pretty good spot. I'm going to save money. Although, he is interested. If we can sign him for two years, I would be okay with that. All right, Hunter Henry's actually back for two years. We still have money. I don't think I'm going to sign anybody in free agency this year. I'm not even sure who we would get. It would have to be, you know, like a superstar player for pretty cheap. Bosa's here. Javon Holland is here. Don't really need Nick Bosa. Again, I can't really see us signing anybody in this period. Yeah, we're going to save money. All right, we don't pick till the end of the second round pretty much. So we'll just simulate straight there and make the most of this pick. Can't really imagine we find too much of a difference maker, although Roy Fairley looks good. And I also like the look of Javier Walker. Yeah, Roy Fairley, Roy Fairley's gonna be the guy. Looks pretty good. Hidden Dev, good athletic ratings. He has the Raphael Wilkinson face from Lions franchise, although Raphael Wilkinson is significantly bigger. CPU is gonna handle the rest of the draft. I thought we did okay considering where we picked, but again, we have uh, not really any needs right now. 74 overall receiver, pretty good. Got Pierre Thomas. Remember the uh, the New Orleans Saints running back, Pierre Thomas? It's pretty good. Dante Whitner cracked him. Uh, 79 overall tight end in the class. Floyd Stevens, 6'4", 258, 91 speed. First of all, a 91 speed tight end is ridiculous. But at 258 pounds, it is borderline absurd. He is a superstar X Factor. Yeah, th that player is pretty sick. No, Brown has a uh, star dev too. Batten has been upgraded to superstar development, by the way. Kind of nice. His coverage has not been upgraded even once, it feels like, in this entire rebuild. That kind of sucks. Okay, we're regressing a little bit. Three and four. It looks to be our defense that's not playing well, which is kind of surprising considering that it's the best it has been, 93 overall. Just not really playing all that well. I wonder if it has anything to do with the lack of our, uh, you know, there being a true nose tackle. But we have good players, I don't know. Yeah, we need a better second rush D tackle. The fact that the CPU has Gant and Rose there, Hutchinson is going to play rush right end. 
and Rose is going to slide over and be a rush D tackle. I feel like that's obvious, but the CPU has decided not to do that. Actually, it'll be Zach Gant at rush D tackle. Sheds blocks a whole lot better. So Gant will be replaced by Hutchinson. I don't know if that makes our team better. And I say that just because Gant really should be on the edge, but we're going to try it. Uh, Tristan Wirfs really doesn't want to be here. Just doesn't want to be in Massachusetts. Uh, I want him to stick around, though. Really don't think I can pay him quite this much, though. It's a ridiculous amount, to be fair. I don't know about Tristan Wirfs, man. Really don't. Ayuk will be back for four years. Yep. Zach Gant is an easy one. This is going to be... I mean, this is going to be a seven-year extension. Zach Gant is back. On Wenu for five years, he returns. And then John Betts does not want to be here. He will be re-signed. I will pretty much guarantee it. Josh Uche, four-year extension. He returns. He's one where we didn't really, like, super need him. But I didn't want to let him go. And then Owusu Koromoa doesn't really want to be here. We don't really even have the money to offer him. Okay. So this is where we're in a tough spot. Tristan Wirfs, no way we can re-sign him. No way. Way too expensive. I don't really want to trade him, but I'm going to have to. And we're going to do a tackle swap. Tristan Wirfs for Lamar Curtis. He's a 24-year-old superstar dev left tackle. We're getting a first and a second round pick as well. It's just about money. Wirfs is cool. He was going to play half a season more with us. That's it. We're going to be able to extend the left tackle. We're going to be able to do it for cheaper. And it just makes the team better. It's a huge loss right now. But long term, we will be better. He's going to be expensive too. But he's still half as expensive as Tristan Wirfs. We need to figure out how to make some money though. We just lost 40 to nothing to the Seahawks. Okay. We're paying too many players. We can't extend him right now. I'm not sure that we'll be able to bring back Owusu Koromoa either. John Betts is going to be tough. We just, we don't have the money right now. Betts wants more money. Are right, we cut some players so we can actually afford to offer some contract extensions now. Uh, they're not cheap per usual. John Betts wants more money. We're going to figure it out. We're losing a lot of games right now. It almost seems like we're in a transitional period, but we are going to figure it out. And we did not make the playoffs, 7-10. and 10. We have the best team we've had, and it, I mean, continues to fall apart. Damon Holland is regressing in terms of production, and I think it might be due to the lack of a true great running back. Brandon Ayuk is putting up incredible numbers, though. JOK led the team in tackles, tackles for loss, 17 for Rose. Zach Gant had 16 sacks, 10 and a half for Rose. What we're probably going to do is change to a 4-3 defense. We got to mix something up here. Bills, it's going to be Chiefs defense. And I don't know. Probably, I think we're probably just going to stick in Chiefs offense. But something's got to change here for sure. We're going to be in a bit of a tough spot. We got to bring back some talented players, surely, and not let them escape. But... Escapes, I don't know, that's kind of a crazy word to use, but <laughs> we got to stay stay good. I don't know. Chiefs, again, with a huge output in the Super Bowl, 49 points. Brandon Ayuk wins Offensive Player of the Year. Patrick Mahomes still doing his thing, as is Josh Allen. Okay, so we're up to 65 million. How did that happen? Who retired? Ramondre Stevenson retired after eight years. Okay. John Betts extension. John Betts is finally back. We have flexibility now. Uh, it surely wasn't only Ramondre Stevenson. It was, you know, salaries over time essentially work like a mountain. You have the climb, you have the peak value, and then it goes down near the end depending on how it's structured. So that's very good timing for us. Lamar Curtis is going to get a big extension. Ends up being expensive. But he's going to be as good as Tristan Wirfs is. And he's going to be $10 million cheaper at his most expensive. Even more than that. Jeremiah Wusu koromoa 29 years old. Four-year deal, $10 million per year. I don't think he's going to accept this, though, is the thing. 
He's going to test free agency. What is the middle linebacker franchise tag? Probably like 15 mil at this point. Oh, 12.8. All right. Yeah, let's do that. Man, Josh Jacobs feels like he'd be a really good fit on a short contract. Don't really want to spend a lot of money, but Josh Jacobs would be amazing. Now, DeAndre Swift does want to be here. We need a running back badly. Maybe a two-year deal and lower the money. I don't think he's going to accept that, is the thing. But maybe he will. Certainly possible. Still, oh, the Bengals are in now. He's going to go to Cincinnati. He's on to Cincinnati. It's a great reference. We just, I mean, I don't want Cam Akers. We are just going to hold off. We'll draft a running back, maybe. Okay, this could be a good running back. I haven't really seen too many of them in this uh, franchise league. I always look for juke move to be really good. That's kind of like a good tell. But great agility, elite acceleration, elite change of direction, great speed, also good. I don't think he's anything crazy, uh, crazy but Najee Lindsay could be worth a first rounder. I feel like you very rarely see defensive tackles with A block shed. I feel like a lot of the time it's C, sometimes B, never really see A. We do have a top 10 pick in this draft. Will we actually use it is the question. Now, I really did some advanced scouting on Keon Madison as a focus player. Block shed's a bit low, tackle's a bit low. Pretty good athlete. I may be on him. That linebacker is not a player I'm going to trade up for. So if he's available at 10, we can consider it. If not, we're going to go ahead and trade down, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Cardinals offering us projected number two overall pick next year. I'll do it. Now, they're not always right with their projections. I mean, you can see the Cardinals are just a few picks away. But if they're really bad, I'm in. And Najee Lindsay is available here at pick number 27. Need a running back pretty badly. Going to draft him. Does have hidden dev. 94 acceleration, 92 agility, 92 change of direction, 93 speed. Seems pretty good. Now, juke move as a D, I do not like at all. That's pretty bad. But maybe he makes up for it in other ways. Chargers offering me a first round pick for uh, number 10 here in the second round. I'm going to do that all day. And we'll take a second round pick from the Colts next year uh, and a fifth as well. Draft recap, 75 overall for Najee Lindsay, 73 for the tight end Caleb Jamello, who's on my board. Had another tight end, but he got drafted right in front of me, so we were stuck with him. But he is a 73 overall with Hidden Dev. Never a bad idea to have that depth at tight end. But Najee Lindsay at 75 overall, not terrible, not great. Class in general wasn't too good. And uh, he was pretty much as good as we could have done. Kyle Duggar is up to superstar dev, but he is actually only an 81 overall at 33 years old. So don't love that. We do have good depth at the position, though, because we have, you know, the guy we signed. Batten is up to superstar X Factor. Might be time to move on from uh, Kyle Duggar. Hate to say it, but it might be time. Here's what we're going to do, though. To extend Kyle Duggar's career, we're going to move him to linebacker, which is what he is anyway, essentially. Uh, like, he, you know, he's a... He's a really athletic, lighter linebacker, but he fits in there for us, and that gives Batten the opportunity to start at strong safety. Should be really good over there. Rose has been moved to D-tackle. We have Gant, Hutchinson on the end, and then we have Usu Koromoa, Campbell, Uche, and Duggar. Pretty good combo. Could definitely look to draft a linebacker, because I don't even know if we're going to be able to hold on to JOK. And then offensively, we really just need that running back. Starting off week one with a loss to the Chiefs. Never good. Five and two at the midseason mark. Our defense playing a whole lot better. Number one in the league. Offense actually stepping up as well. This is the team I expected. Yes, we have won a Super Bowl, but I, I want more. And this will be a really telling period because we have, I mean, just so many big free agents. So many. Henry, we have to finally not re-sign. Wolin, two-year deal. He returns. JC Horn doesn't have any interest. We are an underdog for the Super Bowl chase. We might wait on JC Horn because we are not an underdog. I'm not paying Jeremiah Usu Koromoa like an edge rusher, and that's what they want us to do. Not gonna do it. Oh my god. The end of this Patriots game is absurd. 
The former Patriot Chandler Jones houses. There's a flag. Hold on. If you were watching Patriots Raiders, this is being uploaded just days after. So you would have seen it. But the former Patriot Chandler Jones touchdown as time expires. They're walking off the field. I, I mean, flag picked up. I don't know. They're saying final. It popped up flag on the bottom ticker, but there's no flag. Game over. Raiders stun the Patriots. Mac Jones, man, we made the right move moving on from him. Okay. Dude, all these guys want to play for a Super Bowl Patriots team, but they think we're bad. Trust me, dude, we're not bad. Donovan McPherson, no longer term commitment, no deal. I offered you a five-year deal. Okay. This really isn't a bad contract for Jerry Judy. I just don't know if he's going to sign. Oh, he does. Okay. Jerry Judy's back. I mean, I, I don't even know what to make of that Raiders finish. Why Jacoby Myers would ever lob it back across the field to uh, Chandler Jones, I'll never know. He tried to throw it back to Mac. I I don't know what that was. I know nothing about that was Mac Jones' fault. I'm just saying, like, he sucked this game because he did. <laughs> Not saying everything was his fault, but man. Uh, what is Jacoby Myers doing? What are the Patriots doing? What just happened? Okay, so we have made the playoffs at 10-7. and 7. Wild card team. Hopefully we're no longer considered an underdog. I hope not. Shout out Underdog Fantasy. Use code Bengal. $100 deposit match. My underdog picks were actually pretty good today. Uh, I went with a three-man. Gerald Everett, Justin Herbert, and Jared Goff all over for receptions, passing yards, and passing attempts. That three for three hit without insurance, which was nice. And then I had an insured $25 entry five man that I have Derrick Henry over rushing yards hit, Garrett Wilson over receiving yards hit, Justin Herbert over passing attempts hit, and then Greg Dulcich playing the team that allows the most yards to tight ends this season by a mile after back-to-back -back eight target games. Well, Brett Rippon was the quarterback. He had 11 yards receiving uh, and his, his line was 40 and a half. So he misses. So I can insurance cash if Brian Robinson goes for 67 plus tonight. But yeah, kind of, kind of a miss there. Anyway, back to video game football. We need a running back. Hunter Henry actually led our team in catches and yards. 16 touchdowns for Ayuk though. We are going to need a new tight end. We're going to need a new linebacker. Aiden Hutchinson, 19 sacks. Okay. Thurman Rose. Shockingly, didn't get more sacks with like 98 or 99 power moves. 15 for Gantt, 16 for Betts. Crazy production and a number of interceptions for the team. JOK is going to be difficult to replace. I can just, I, I can't pay him like an edge rusher. I won't do it. Now, is it going to be Darius Sawyer? He's 24 years old. He's an 80 overall. This could be our tight end of the future. I'm not sure we have to go out and look for one, trade for one, sign one in free agency. I think we have them on roster. Can we actually win a playoff game? Yeah, we crushed the Bills 37-23. And the AFC East will only continue in the playoffs through us. They're, the town, this playoffs, if you, if you want to call it, uh, was not big enough for the both of us. Man, I didn't phrase that like I wanted to. <laughs> Do run stopper for Uche. Divisional against Jacksonville, big win over the Cowboys today as I record this, which I understand this is probably like ever, and they eliminate us. This is evergreen content, so this video is going to be watched for a long time after th just this week. But uh, I am recording on Sunday, so all this stuff is super fresh in my mind. Yeah, and, and the uh, Jags beat the Cowboys. A bunch of unlikely games in this particular week, like the Chiefs went to OT. Chiefs went to OT against the Texans. Boys kind of cutting out on me a bit. Here are the Jags losing in the Super Bowl to the Cardinals, and I think we have their first-round pick. So that's not great. We have more interest now because J.C. Horn, yeah, because now we're a playoff contender. Okay, that's going to make it a lot easier to re-sign some of these players. J.C. Horn, boom, back for four years. Did Koromoa have Superstar? I don't think so. I can't pay him that. I, I don't know. I can't. I can't. I'm over it. Hutchinson's up to Superstar X Factor, though. I can definitely pay him, and the interest is certainly there now. Four-year deal probably is where I sit on that, and he's going to come back as well. Don't test free agency, dude. What a little loser. I'm going to franchise tag you. Butker, don't really need to extend him. Jarek Campbell, though, I do want. 
He is not expensive. Uh, we're going to give him a little bit more money than this. Six-year deal. Welcome back, Jared Campbell. Oh, Darius Sawyer has an expiring contract. Cannot let him test free agency. That's a good deal for us, though. He's still going to test? That's crazy. Najee Harris in free agency. The Chubber not. These guys are just a little bit too old for my liking. But Chubb for a year is good. If we can get Nick Chubb, and I think we'll be able to, he definitely makes us a lot better right now. Who's this little freak? Connor Bonds, 26 years old, is a power rusher. Don't really need that. It's a right guard with pretty significant interest who's a pretty good age as well. I just don't know if we're going to spend money this year, other than maybe Nick Chubb. Lindsey does have superstar dev, though. Did he have that or did he get it? He probably had it. Okay, so that becomes a really good pick for us. Short out elite. I don't really feel like that's that good for us. One year left on the Marco Brown contract. Do we want to pay him next year or replace him now? Oh, I want to bring that back the tight end. That's right. Unless there's a sick tight end in this class somehow. Need a linebacker. D-line's sick. Henry wants to come back. Don't want him. Sawyer doesn't want to come back, but we want him. And we got him. Did we get Chubb? No. Chubb has signed. No, we did get him. Okay, we got Nick Chubb. Don't have a lot of money right now. He's all right. We're making do. Wow, okay. So everyone is a quarterback at the top of this class. Five of the first five players are quarterbacks. And there's another one in the top 10. This would be quite the class to need a QB. But for us, I just hope they fly off the board because we don't pick until... 21 or 20 I think it's 26 actually and I think this might be our last draft until we maybe do like five years of simulating or something like that why did I say simulating like that I was gonna say simulation and I didn't Emmanuel Brooks is intriguing that certainly could be our replacement for JOK maybe try JD Cannon down the board not to be confused with KD Cannon former Baylor receiver or yeah yeah Ooh, Darnell Smith, that is the one. A tackle, A zone, run stopper archetype. Good athlete. We might double dip on linebackers. He should be available 26. I think that's gonna be the guy we take. Oh, he went one pick before us to the page or to the Lions. Oh my goodness. So many QBs still on the board. Well, this linebacker also looks really good. Elite acceleration, change of direction, and speed. Outside linebacker. Coverage isn't amazing, but block shedding and tackling is. Kiri Rose, normal development. I think we missed out on a, a good player right in front of us. I really do. And we actually have another first round pick that's right. We have another first round pick after that. We're going to go ahead and trade down from this one though, surely. Falcons first rounder next year. Boom. This tight end looks like a freak athletically. The speed isn't like crazy, but it is great, which is pretty good. Another cannon here, Artie. <laughs> it's a fun name, Artie Cannon. Also has great speed. Okay, mm, we're gonna take Zach Douglas. He is the fastest tight end in the class with good run blocking and short route running, and he is 275 pounds. Zach Douglas, hidden dev. He is an offensive lineman. Do we take the other tight end anyway? Marcus Jacobs was the one I liked quite a bit. Yeah, let's take him anyway. Let's double dip on tight ends. He has normal dev. We would have made the right decision anyway with the change, but now we just have a lot of great depth at a position that doesn't really matter too much. Sweet. But JD Cannon is still available. This was the guy I said I was gonna draft. Yeah, the block shit's not great. This is the guy, this, all right, he's got good coverage though. Hidden Dev, 89 speed and acceleration, okay. Not too bad for the 21 year old. Draft recap, how'd we do? 76 overall, actually a little bit better than I would have expected. I mean, I guess the player did look pretty good, just, you know, can't really cover too well, and the dev trait's not great. Zach Douglas is 73. Marcus Jacobs is actually 75. 72 overall middle linebacker, JD Cannon. Tyron Mason is a 74 overall. So a pretty good backup center there. Do you have hidden dev? Nope. And there was actually an 81 overall left tackle, Terrence Barton. Oh my goodness. 6'9", 331. Yeah, he's pretty good. The next highest player was a quarterback that fell to the second round with 92 speed. And Rose was actually a higher overall than Darnell Smith here, who went one pick before us, but does have hidden development. I mean, he's not 
quite as good, but he might as well be, and he has a better dev trait, so I'd probably prefer him over the guy we landed with. Only star dev, though. All right, so we're going to turn everything onto auto here and let the CPU take over for a few years. We're kind of in the groove right now. We've built a really good team. Haven't exactly figured out the Super Bowl. I think we'll simulate to the Super Bowl here and then let the CPU take over. But we really should be a Super Bowl team. We're right there. Just can't get our second one just yet. CPU drafted us a star dev quarterback. And he's actually a decently high overall. 69, first of all, nice. Second of all, 90 throw accuracy. Wild stuff. He looks familiar. I can't quite put my finger on it, but he... Something about him. Defensively, Cannon has star dev. We could use more depth on the defensive line, like a, a good third defensive tackle, but we are back in the playoffs. We snuck in. We're, we're going to lose to the Chiefs probably, but it was a good run. And then we'll let the CPU take over and see how it goes. We do win though. Hold on. And a breakout linebacker. It's Kiari Rose. All right. Kiri, I don't know. Kiari sounds cooler. Divisional 2030. How'd we do? Another win. And it's the 9 and 8 Patriots against the 9 and 8 Ravens in the conference championship. Okay, we got life. Did we get star dev on Kiari Rose? Nope, really. Probably just didn't play enough. Can we beat the Ravens looking for Super Bowl number two? Only the second appearance if we make it of this video. But I guess it's not bad in like eight years. It's not amazing. And we don't make it. It's gonna be Ravens Seahawks. I'll see you in a few seasons. It is 2037 and the CPU has done a pretty horrific job keeping this team together. And the big person that actually stayed is our quarterback, Damon Holland. He is 35 years old and down to an 86 overall but still pretty good. Lindsey is our starting running back, Najee Lindsey. You remember we drafted him. He's 30 years old now and all the way up to a 94 overall. So, yep, had a season behind Nick Chubb and then he took over as the workhorse back and has enjoyed a pretty good career. Obviously up to a 94 overall, not bad, but multiple seasons over 11 and 1200 yards, including multiple double digit touchdown seasons on the ground. We have Bruce Wayne, is this Batman? Brian Wayne, the rookie out of Clemson. A little slow, but there is something here. The physical archetype receiver, surely. Oh, he's playmaker. Okay. It's a little surprising, but there is also a stud receiver in Enrique Clifford. 5'11", 193, is 27 years old, but a 93 overall deep threat receiver with 98 speed. Great catching, catching traffic, deep route running. Short route running leaves a lot to be desired but he is a really, really good player and the best receiver we've seen over the course of this entire rebuild. Curtis is still here. He is a 96 overall. At tight end, there's been a lot of uh, turnover. Not really anyone on the offense uh, that you'll recognize other than that. But on defense, we do have Gant. Zach Gant has stuck around and is, of course, a very good player, but is 34 years old. And you're kind of seeing the tail end of some of these players that we've seen for so long in this rebuild. Uh, Goodwin was a corner I had on my draft board. And I'm excited to actually finally see him later. He was in, I think, the first draft, maybe the second. I think probably the second draft. But we didn't end up taking him because we had depth at the position. But come full circle and he is uh, back here. Cannon is up to an 87 overall. Rose is at an 84. You can see Jared Campbell down to an 83, but the team is pretty good. We just obviously are in a situation again where we have to get younger, have to get better. Jamie Griffin is a really good starting free safety, really good tackler with exceptional man coverage skills. He could probably end up transitioning the corner if we wanted to go that direction. We could certainly do that, but we have our work cut out for us here in 2037. As we'll continue the rebuild, we got four or five more seasons to try and win some Super Bowls. Of course, you might remember that Seahawks-Ravens Super Bowl, but in 2031, the Broncos beat the Giants. Aziz Ojolari, the former Patriot in this, won Super Bowl MVP, no Patriots. 2032, we got another Super Bowl, our eighth. Damon Holland won NFL MVP. Middle linebacker J.D. Cannon, who we drafted, was Super Bowl MVP in one of the lowest scoring Super Bowls we've seen since probably the 1970s. 
13 to 11. That was also the year that we drafted Enrique Clifford, who won Offensive Rookie of the Year. In 2033, we won back-to-back Super Bowls, our ninth. Quarterback Damon Holland won Super Bowl MVP. No Patriots other than that, but a ninth Super Bowl. In 2034, it was back to the Broncos. And the Chargers quarterback is Kirk Kirkpatrick, who won MVP. No Patriots, but they have Nick Bosa, the Broncos do. And they won back-to-back Super Bowls. Trevor Lawrence of the Bengals wins Super Bowl MVP. No Patriots. And then last year, 2036, Chargers beat the Cardinals. And Kirk Kirkpatrick won Super Bowl MVP. No Patriots. And we make the playoffs going 11-6, and six, as do the Jets. And we are certainly in the twilight of our quarterback's career. Got to make the most of these opportunities. Ah, oh, that's cool. Or, or not. Or freeze the app. All right, Damon Holland. 4,300 yards, 34 touchdowns to 13 interceptions. Najee Lindsay with another good year, 12-12-12. If you figure the uh, yards and touchdowns are the same. Dylan Morrison was our leading receiver. Morrison is a normal dev receiver, our wide receiver too. Not really a deep route running guy, but was definitely in the slot. Chad Slater, what a name. Ends up with over 1,000 yards playing tight end. Enrique Clifford, pretty good. Probably will end up putting him in the slot. And then defensively, J.D. Cannon led the team in tackles with Jared Campbell right behind him. Tackles for loss, we saw 16 from Zach Gant, including 18 and a half sacks. Eight and a half from Daniel Dukes. Five interceptions from Luke Goodwin, not too bad. And we have a Lamar Kirkpatrick with three interceptions. And we actually lose to the Bengals in the wild card, and we are moving on to the offseason. Well, at least we lost to the Super Bowl winning team. The Bengals get it done. No Patriots in the awards, and we got a lot of... Uh, Fake players at this point. In fact, I think all fake players. There might be like one or two quarterbacks or maybe a kicker sticking around, but it's probably, it's probably, yeah, I mean, Trevor Lawrence is here. I was going to say probably nobody, but Trevor Lawrence, I think, is the final real player sticking around here. Damon Holland, close to eclipsing 70,000 career passing yards, has... 568 career passing touchdowns, a very good career, but not quite to Peyton Manning just yet for career passing yards. And for passing touchdowns, he is very close to entering the top five. 216 million in available salary cap. Let's see who we have to bring back. Najee Lindsay, Zach Gant, Damon Holland. This is why Kiari Rose, a lot of older players who we are probably familiar with already. However, probably going to try and get younger. Wyatt Walsh deserves an extension. 27 years old. This is someone that's going to help us out quite a lot. Zach Gant for a year works. A lot of these guys are going to be like one-year deals. Najee Lindsay, I think three years is okay. And he'll return. Not going to let Damon Holland walk yet. We'll give him a two-year deal. He's 36 years old, but... Should be good for the next couple of seasons, and we'll probably actively look for his replacement. We don't we don't need someone to be like a long-term stud for us. We got about five years left to make this 20 years, right? So we gotta factor that in with how we play this. It's either like draft a quarterback now and develop them, or we could potentially be in the position to trade for one or even sign one in free agency depending on who's here. Felix Black is going to be the guy I target first here. 25 years old, has interest in the team. Feels like it makes a ton of sense to bring him in. Wayne, by the way, has superstar development. Did he get it or did he have it? He had it. Okay, so our receivers are actually pretty nice. We could use another one, certainly. The offensive line, despite not having a lot of good development traits, is pretty good. We could use one more, maybe two. Brian Philbin. Hmm. Superstar Dev. What we're going to do is have him start at free safety. We're going to move Jamie Griffin down a corner. He's got 92 man coverage. I think he's going to be a really good corner for us. Of course, we should be signing one in free agency as well. So that weakness now should turn into a strength. Hendricks is an interesting player too. Only 22 years old. Also, I like how he spells Hendricks like Jimi Hendrix. Kind of cool. 80 power moves. Good block shed, good strength. Speed's not amazing. Could definitely play defensive tackle for us as well. And in fact, we might look to do that. Jared Campbell's 33 now. 
Could use an upgraded outside linebacker as well. But for right now, he's all we got. Now, this is the guard we had, right? Marco Brown. I think we're going to go for a tackle, though, in Eric Campbell. Pretty expensive, but also pretty good. We just had the tackle that we traded for, for uh, from the Ravens retire on us. So we have a huge need at the position. A five-year contract. I think he's going to be really good for us. Expensive-ish. I don't think it's too bad. Jarek Jeffrey is a crazy name. Ethan Boston, what do we have here? Run stopper. Kind of fits the bill for us. 27 years old, but unlike, you know, a three or four year contract, it's kind of exactly what I want. Four year contract, kind of a lot of money, but we have it. He'll still develop a little bit, so I don't mind it. We are the only team offering these three players. We should be able to get both of them, but now there's competition. Now there's competition. We got Ethan Boston, though, and that's fitting. You know, with Boston, Foxborough, not too far. Maybe like 40 minutes away. Maybe a little bit more. Nope, 35, 40 minutes. Can we still get both of these players? Or do, I do, do I need to increase my offer? They're both gone. We didn't get either of them. Oh, that's bad. That's a huge miss. Should have increased my offer. We were number one. I didn't think I had to. Oh, there's Connor Bonds. Remember him. Well, we really... We really swung and missed in free agency because we could have upgraded offensive line and corner, and we didn't get either. We did get a really good outside linebacker in Ethan Boston. Cool. It's just not enough. We saved money for what? There better be good players in free agency next year. We pick at number 20. I would trade up if the right player was available, and there appear to be some good ones. Joey Allen will be a stud. For sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this is a generational receiver. A catch in traffic, catching release, spec catch, short route running. Ran in the four twos at six foot four, 218 pounds. Joey Allen will be drafted by me. I'm trading up. Raphael Ford, interesting. 71 overall quarterback, 24 years old. Might trade him in Miami here. And the biggest reason I want to trade up is I don't want to let the Dolphins get a generational player. We don't have a lot to trade. It's kind of our big problem. Do not have a lot. Trading my third receiver, a fourth and a fifth for number 46 from the Steelers. That is hopefully going to get traded here to the Dolphins. But they have played some hardball already. Watching the Giants game on primetime right now. I don't know if you can tell a big Giants fan. Kayvon Thibodeau just bitched the left tackle. Stripped Taylor Heineke, recovered the fumble for a touchdown. Monster. Should have gone number one overall. He's a freak. I mean, what a player. What a player. Let's go. Trading number 46, Jared Campbell, and a first round pick next year for number one overall from the Miami Dolphins. And we're going to use it to take Calvin Johnson. I mean, whatever this guy's name is. Joey Allen from Clemson. What if Justin Ross never got injured? Who knows? He was never running 428. This guy's a freak. 98 speed, 99 jumping, guaranteed superstar X Factor, generational receiver. He is a freak. Welcome to the Patriots, Joey Allen. This defensive end, Jamal Barrow, Barrow looks pretty good. I don't think we're going to be able to trade up to get him. I think we traded up as much as we could, really. I want to accumulate draft picks for next year, really, but. Uh, we're just hoping that that class would be really, really good. This receiver also looks really good. Skip the combine. Hmm. Said, hey, Roger Goodell, not doing your little song and dance. Go fuck yourself. This center looks really good. That's who we're going to take. Just a really solid interior offensive lineman. Can't wait. Trading number 20, a third, and a fourth next year. for number 32 this year and number 24 projected next year from Cincinnati. So I'm to the stockpile picks stage. I'm just trading down for future first rounders. Cowboys are usually too good. Jets, maybe. Let's do it with the Steelers though. Now is the center still available or are we gonna go a different direction? Does not appear to still be on the board. This defensive tackle looks sick though. Speed rusher with B block shed. Welcome to the team, Hidden Dev, 77 speed, 89 strength. I think we may have found a diamond in the rough here. 
He looks pretty sweet. Well, he's gonna be like an 82, 83 or top guy. Only an 81? No! No, I still think he's... Oh, man, maybe he's not gonna be Superstar X Factor. With 99 jumping, 98 speed, I really think he will be though. Still the right move to move all the way up. But that would be, he's, I don't know if that's a generational overall per se. 73 overall for the defensive tackle that we drafted. Anything else crazy in this draft? An 80 overall tight end is pretty nuts. But uh, not that impressive of a class otherwise. But I mean, it, it was good for sure. Our receiving core is pretty sick though. And we got another good defensive tackle. Need another corner. Need a left guard and a tackle. We really missed this last free agency. Really, really did. Why is this guy a free agent? 82 overall, 26 years old. Good rotational player for us for really cheap. Trent Dotson, probably plug and play starter, 27 years old, 76 overall. Just sitting in free agency. We'll do it. All right, let's have a good year. We got a team. We are still building something. I think we're, we're a few pieces away. But we are making strides. Four and three at the midseason mark. Not terrible. Not terrible. Getting better. Need to have another good draft in free agency. And of course, keep the talent that we actually do have on the team. Guys like Zach Gant, not getting any younger. Tyron Mason, kind of the same deal. I will say, I like how cheap everyone is. It's a nice change. Center, not so cheap though. But he returns. Zach Gant, can we get you back for two years? Yeah. He might retire at some point. But he's still a high enough overall with a high enough dev trait that I am willing to still give him an extension. 12 and 5. There we go. Big time season. Damon Holland. Pretty good numbers, if I do say so myself. Najee Lindsay, quite good. 19 touchdowns. Receiving. Joey Allen, quite the rookie year. 10 touchdowns. And show me Superstar X Factor. Thank you. Not sure if I'd call him generational, but I kind of would. 99 speed, 99 jumping at this point. Like, he's he's a freak. For sure. Let's do playmaker. How do we do defensively? JD Cannon still playing pretty well, as is Zach Gant. Eli Crawford with 11 and a half sacks. This was the guy we signed out of free agency. JD Cannon also had five interceptions, which led the team. Still only 29 years old. His zone coverage is incredibly high. Really, really good player will probably start regressing soon, but with a season like this is going to get Defensive Player of the Year consideration and maybe even win Linebacker of the Year. So I could certainly see him going up to Superstar. Probably not ever Superstar X-Factor though, but I think Superstar is in the realm of possibility. But we are out of the playoffs already. All right. Falcons beat the Chargers in the Super Bowl. I think I have the Chargers pick. Do I not? Nathaniel Hackett, Coach of the Year. Okay. Not going to re-sign anybody in here. We have money. We will spend it in free agency. You know, we had a good season, 12 and five, number two offense, number nine defense in terms of scoring. We are in a good spot. We need to get better though. And hopefully there are some really talented, you know, younger than 29, 28 year old in a free agency. And they're all old. They're all old. Oh, Eli Crawford, this is who we had. He's in free agency right now. Well, I'll offer him an extension. All right, let's see if we can get Eli Crawford. Also going after Rainey. Don't really care about him. Brian, or Eli Crawford signs. Brian Rainey also signs. It's good depth. 25 years old. 82 overall or so. Haven't addressed our positions of need because I can't. I'm just not going to sign randoms in free agency because they're there. I don't really want band-aids. I want solutions. So I'm willing to save money and wait in order to get it done. Cannon is up to superstar dev. I would love for Hendricks to get better because our favorite, Gant, retired unfortunate linebackers are pretty good safeties are pretty good could use a corner and we actually just need one offensive lineman if we can sign a tackle out of free agency we actually look pretty good alex gore how about a four-year contract to come play for the patriots out of georgia tackle pretty recently in real life actively isaiah win and we signed him offensive line somewhat revamped this running back john zimmerman kind of qualifies for what I look for. A juke move, elite change of direction. Agility is only decent. Another Ohio State player. We've seen a ton of them in this. 2039 NFL Draft Giants at number one overall. We pick at number 17. 
and I did some advanced scouting on only three players. There were only three players that were even somewhat appealing to me. Tremaine Thomas, is this the guy? He says he has great speed. Didn't run all that well. A power moves, B block shedding. Looks to be pretty good. Gordon Brackett, if we're going to go with a pass rusher, looks pretty good too. The running backs on the board. I don't really know how to play this. And Tremaine Thomas goes number one overall. So there goes that plan. I was thinking if he was available at three, I would consider a trade up. Not going to happen now. Gordon Brackett's here at 17. Do I draft him? Let's do it. Hidden Dev, 81 speed, 86 strength, 81 acceleration, 6'5", 280. Another Ohio State player. Is the running back here at 29? And is that the right decision? The running back is gone. So I don't have to make that decision. Don't spell Jerry like that. Jerry, Jerry. Ugh. And we're making a uh, move here. Making a trade. Number 29, number 87, and number 93 gets us a second round pick next year from the Niners, as well as the player we actually made the move for. And that player is corner Marlon Samuels. Superstar development. Pretty good overall at only 24 years old. Definitely more suited for zone coverage with his attributes here. But hopefully we can upgrade man coverage and uh, he should be pretty good. We didn't get that corner that signed with the Jags in free agency. Black? M Marlon Black? Something Black? Felix Black. But I think we got the next best thing, which is basically the zone style of Felix Black, but like two years ago or where he would have been two years ago. Trading three second round picks, one this year, two next year, for a first round pick next year from the Broncos. That is our draft. Draft recap, how'd we do? 72 overall for Gordon Brackett, not my favorite pick that I've ever made. That is a low overall. Power moves is a bit low. I thought it said A, I could have sworn. Block shedding, a little low. Yeah, I'd love to trade him. <laughs> That's where I am. Running back was a 77 overall, by the way. You know, it's funny. I I know I'm not really stoked on this defensive end pick, but this would be exactly the player that would randomly have superstar or superstar X-Factor development. Five and two at the midseason mark, doing pretty well. Number four offense, number three defense, not too bad. 10 players ready to renegotiate, and it's some good ones. Some really important players, including a player that we just traded for. Ooh, Enrique Clifford wants like 25 to 30 million a year. That feels pretty insane. I I don't think I can do that. And we don't really need him. Marlon Samuels, would you like to return? Yes. Four-year deal for Jamie Griffin is accepted. Damon Holland's going to be the tough one. He's 37 years old. I, yeah, I don't know. reason I say we don't need to keep our stud receiver is Joey Allen's 22 with Superstar X Factor. Brian Wayne is 24 with Superstar. We don't really need Enrique Clifford. I think we could get some pretty good offers for him, though. Some really good corners. We could get a lot here. We really could get a ton. Th this is the moment to trade him for sure. Just got to decide what we want. 288 overall corners. Bracket as star dev, by the way. I think... Do we just have that revealed to staff points? Is he still a rookie? We do. Okay. So didn't really get a steal or anything there. I think we need a stud edge rusher. We just don't really have that. I mean, we are getting some offers, some huge offers, a 95 overall corner. Again, we don't really need that, but it is interesting to see. There are three 99 overall players in the league. A few of these 98s playing up, but they're all tight ends. And there's another one. This is weird. Jimmy Cummins from Oklahoma has got to be the one here. Great speed and strength, 91 power moves. I'd like for finesse moves to be higher, but this is the player. Only 24. We got to make something happen here. Clifford probably could do something straight up, but I want to see if I can get some more value from them. PJ Griffith would be the one. Probably won't go through. Oh, he's also a superstar X Factor. That's very close though. Okay, we might, we might we might orchestrate a blockbuster trade. Trading my starting tight end and Crawford who we just extended, as well as number 13 projected for number nine projected and a first next year from the Eagles. But that trade is just setting up a huge trade. 
Making a trade, backup quarterback, and our first round pick bracket this past season, as well as a first round pick this year, number 26, for a first rounder swapping with the Niners and also getting a second next year. But that was all to set up this massive trade. It is Enrique Clifford, number nine projected, second round pick next year for some of the Colts' best players the week we play them. Swapping our stud receiver for their stud, 31-year-old tight end Edwards. We know about Cummins and also Griffith. Two good young players at the bottom. Edwards is old-er, but still very, very good. And I imagine some of those players are in contract years. But I think we just traded, yeah, some valuable picks, no doubt, and a stud receiver. But I think we turned it into a team rather than just, you know, one player. Huge upgrade at tight end in Landry Edwards. Yes, 31, but very good player. Upgraded strong safety in the superstar X-Factor 25-year-old PJ Griffith. Again, stud, 93 man coverage. He could probably go play corner, and I think we are going to make that change. Now we have three good corners. Griffin is getting older, but that's why we have Griffith now. Kirkpatrick's still good. Philbin, still pretty good. Linebacker's great. Cummins is a huge upgrade at the position. Yes, we had the guy that played pretty well last year, but I think Cummins is on a different level here, and Cummins is ready to explode. I really expect his production to be really, really good this year. And uh, I'm excited for it. So I think we just solidified what could be a Super Bowl winning team here with the most wild trade deadline I've ever had. And we end up crushing the Colts 38-14. And none of those players have expiring contracts that we just traded for, by the way. So it actually looks even better. Deion Hobson returns, 24 years old, back up right now, but I don't know if he will be long-term. And then Damon Holland, we've talked about a lot. Definitely wants to be here. But I don't know if we want him to be here. I don't think we're going to be able to come to an agreement. 10 and 7, we sneak into the playoffs. I am really worried about what's going to happen at quarterback in the last few years of this rebuild. Damon Holland put up a pretty good season. Very few turnovers, and that's because Najee Lindsay had so many touchdowns, 16. Brian Wayne led our team in receiving yards. But these numbers are obviously really skewed and weird because of all the trades we made. Joey Allen, 12 touchdowns. But we were in a transitional period at receiver. Oh my goodness. Jimmy Cummins put up 30 sacks. Cummins, 30 sacks. Oh my goodness. Ridiculous numbers. 14 TFLs. And I don't know if that was mostly with the Colts were with us, but either way, I mean, just absurd production. 11, 15 and a half, 30. Now nah, he just went on a crazy stretch at the end of the season. Five and a half sacks versus the Texans. I mean, he put up double, or, or excuse me, more than one sack in every single game uh, on our team, except for against his former team where he had one and a half and against the Eagles in week 14. Put up more than one sack. Or I guess one and a half is more than one sack. So we'll... I don't know what I said at first. Production was okay with the Colts. It was unbelievable with the Patriots. So Brian Rainey, who we have, we signed him, right? He's got about 90 finesse moves. He might have a role on this team that is not just, you know, backup outside linebacker. He might end up sliding down a defensive end and being a beast. I'm trying to think of what scenario that would that would be. Because I'll be honest, Hendricks to me, not that good. He just hasn't done it yet. He's a little slow. Block shedding is pretty good though. I think he's a defensive tackle, to be honest. So we might we might slide him over to D tackle. I think we will. Rainey's gonna slide down to play left end. And I think our team gets even better. Man, I'm, I, I'm watching this Jacoby Myers throw back to Chandler Jones for the game-ending touchdown. It's tough to watch. It's really, I hate to say it, and I'm not using it the way a lot of you do, but it really is cringeworthy. It, it really is tough to watch because Ramondre Stevenson rips off a big one, and then he pitches it back to Jacoby Myers, who just throws it back across the field. Back, it's just, it's a vicious play to watch. 
I think that makes us better. Could end up trading one of these defensive tackles, but I do appreciate the depth. And having depth at linebacker really helped us out. Teams have been trying to trade for Hobson. I have not let them. And now he is a true starter in a playoff game. So we got a team. Team's got to play well. Is our quarterback going to hold us back? He's pretty good this past year. I want to win another Super Bowl. Wild card. Done and dusted. Raiders, 14-3. and three. Great season. Let's send them home. Nope, we're going home. How many times have we seen that this video? Too many. Packers beat the Raiders in the Super Bowl here in 2039. Bills quarterback Frank Tobin wins MVP. How do we not... Oh, we did. I, I misread. I was looking at defensive rookie of the year. Yeah, Jimmy Cummins wins defensive player of the year. I would hope so with 30 sacks. That will go down in this little franchise league as the greatest mid-season trade acquisition of all time. How would it not? We don't end up winning anything, but still amazing. $150 million in available salary cap room. And we don't have to bring anyone back. How is this possible? I'm letting the quarterback go. I'm sorry, Damon Holland. You're down to 81 overall. I will potentially re-sign you in free agency. It's just not going to happen right now. Nobody even retired for us. This is bizarre. I don't know how we have this much salary cap room. I think a lot of it could stem from making trades where we're not really you know, associated with any bonus. Zero bonus, zero bonus, zero bonus. And also the adjusted cap is up to $338 million. So definitely a contributing factor as well. We will have to re-sign Cummins Edwards in uh, this next season. A few pretty good players too, but we can afford to take a shot, maybe two here in free agency. Before I go out and sign a quarterback, if there is one, what do we have in the draft? Show me a sick quarterback. Kevin Harrison, I'm intrigued. Top five, we'd have to move up. But good overall accuracy. UCF quarterback. Hey, been there before. Doesn't really look good enough in honest, in all honesty. Of course, don't need a tight end, but there is potential with this group. Look to be some okay receivers as well. Like we might, you know, pick up one as depth or, or something. But uh, a little bit underwhelming overall. I don't want to trade up for that quarterback. I hope that somehow there's a really good QB that's just in free agency. This linebacker sick. Mello Jones also could be a great pickup. Do we still have that running back? Is he still sticking around? I think he's a free agent next year. So, I mean, we could look a different direction, but still pretty good. I don't really think we have to. We need a, a new running back at some point, but obviously we desperately need a quarterback. Mello Jones is also, it's like a Hall of Fame caliber name. Two-year deal. Maybe we get him, maybe we don't. Dylan Poindexter just looks really good. Doesn't really have an interest. Is older. Probably shouldn't. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. Drew Robbins from Grambling State. Yeah, okay. This is the guy, though. We got to uh, <laughs> we gotta give him a contract. And there are a lot of teams interested. We got to be the one to sign him. That's just it. We have to. What are his interests? He wants to be close to Oklahoma. Well, we really can't do anything about that. Okay, we're going to pay him a fortune, but we need the franchise quarterback. It's only 27. This is our guy until the end of the rebuild. It has to be done. And I'm also considering receiver, to be honest. Marco Phillips is 29. He is fairly expensive. If we can somehow get this guy for a steal... He'd be a really good third option. I don't think it's going to happen, but no one's offering on him, so I would be foolish to not offer. All three players that we targeted are gone. Two of them signed with us. The quarterback, Drew Robbins, we needed the most. And Marco Phillips, the receiver, got him on a pretty good deal. What are we looking for in the draft? Probably just depth. Who's on my draft board here at 13? number of different players, actually. Do I want a linebacker? Do I want another defensive tackle? Don't really need the defensive tackle, but he's run stopper type with B or no, he's power rush type. Oh, I don't know. Really good athlete. I think I'd like the linebacker the most. We're going to draft him. Gavin Callahan, hidden dev, 86 speed, 89 acceleration. I think we should try and get in position for that receiver, but it's going to have to be at the top of the second round. If he's gone, 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the trade up anyway, but if he's gone, we'll just trade down. Second round pick next year and a third round pick this year gets me number 34. I just don't wanna simulate pick by pick at this point. So I'm simulating after already making the trade and hopefully the receiver is still available. And he is gone, nice. Although Kyrie Haynes looks pretty good. This is not a bad replacement. Elite speed, ran 4-2-4 at his pro day. 99 speed, normal dev. Oh, that's something. All right, well, he's fast. Draft recap, Callahan's a 72. The receiver's a 74. Rest of the class is really bad. And this draft class was just not good in general. Highest overall was a 76, and he was the only 76. Beyond that, it's 75s and lower. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the receiver I wanted, by the way, run 1-2. to two. Uh, went at number 21, way earlier than I expected. An upgrade zone, of course, on P.J. Griffith. It's really his one weak point, which is funny because he moved from safety. But he is a much better fit for me at corner. Our team does look really good. Drew Robbins, I hope, is going to be the real deal. And my defense also, I think, looks really, really good. Would love for this to be a playoff team, but who knows. Six and one. Really good stuff here from us at week eight. And uh, got to bring some really impactful players back. A few of them we traded for. And I mean, these are all big time starters. We knew it was going to happen at some point. I'm not even sure if 114 mil is enough. Jimmy Cummins first up is back. Landry Edwards, we're going to have to overpay because he's not interested in the team. But he is back. Brian Wayne, I think we're in the same spot that we were with the other receiver, where I'm just not sure we need him because we paid the superstar X-Factor in free agency, which I, I think was the right decision. Lamar Kirkpatrick, again, we are going to have to overpay. He wants more money. JD Cannon should return. Again, a lot of money. Warren Hendricks, we moved over from defensive end. He needs to take another jump or a jump, period. He just is not developed quickly enough. Okay, let's think about this. Wayne could get traded. For sure. The running back, I think, could get traded. Defense looks pretty good. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and make another midseason blockbuster trade. Okay, what about a good running back that isn't 28 years old or older? Do those exist? 27, that's close. Bryson Mooney, though. That's the one. Superstar X-Factor 25-year-old running back? Yes. Also a sick tight end named George Duckworth. These names are ridiculous. There's little Michael Felix. Did we talk about him? I feel like he was the, uh, I feel like he was the 5'8 receiver that had the Raphael Wilkinson build. I want to say, all right, we're going to make a big trade here. It's going to be a swap. Brian Wayne on the move, which, oh man, I know Marco Phillips is 29. This is not the right decision. Uh, we're going to trade Marco Phillips, the superstar X-Factor we paid instead. Which, yeah, that's, that's a decision. Going to try and trade uh, Najee Lindsay as well. I'd be really comfortable with this swap. Like, really comfortable. It's not exactly going to be that easy. And we have the one, number one projected pick. Okay. I mean, we could certainly make it happen for that. And it might actually have to be. It might be add in number one and then take their first round pick. Their pick is projected to be too high. But this trade is going through Phillips, Lindsay, and number one for Mooney and Staley and a first round pick next year. So Mooney is younger, Staley's younger. And I don't know. I'm pretty happy with the way the trade worked out. It means we are going to have to pay Brian Wayne though. But Tremaine Staley is a really good third, 26 years old, star dev, also 99 speed. And then Bryson Mooney is 25. This is, you know, the running back of the future, obviously. We were going to have to make that change at some point. Wow, he can really catch the football. Mark Kirkpatrick is also back. Scott Tatum, I think we're going to need to extend. We have a little bit more money now. This should be an easy sign. And we don't actually have the money to offer Brian Wayne. So we're going to have to do something. There's not really a way to do it, unfortunately. So yeah, we may have made the wrong move, but I didn't want to trade the 25-year-old superstar. 
We'll see what happens in the offseason. And we made the playoffs. First round by 13 and 4 with our new quarterback. Drew Robbins threw for 4,400 yards, 32 touchdowns to 8 picks. Bryson Mooney. It's hard to know what our numbers look like because the running back we traded but it was pretty good. Brian Wayne led the team in catches. Nope, that's not true. Edwards had the same amount of yards, uh, more catches, and more touchdowns. So he kind of should be listed first. It's very close, though. But uh, whatever. Defensively, J.D. Cannon led the team in tackles. 20 for loss for Brian Rainey. Good transition to left end. 11 for Jimmy Cummins, who put up 18 and a half sacks. 12 for Rainey, 11 for Warren Hendricks. That's the breakout season I was looking for. 9 for Justin Hargrove. And then a good number of picks, I would say. Uh, I mean, we're probably going to lose to the Steelers here. Should we? I mean, home field advantage, significantly better team. We're probably going to lose, though. Just kind of how that works. Ooh, a 14-10 win. What a performance. Tell me we can beat the Bengals, please. They're 10 and 7. They are a worse team than we are. We are playing at home. Please. Please, can we get back to the Super Bowl? Yes. Patriots, Bears. We're finally back. Ooh, Edwards up to Superstar X Factor. That is a nice improvement. Wayne's still on the team for this Super Bowl run. I think we've made the right decisions in those regards. Uh, defensively, any dev trade increases. I think Samuels had a superstar, but Philbin up to superstar could be new. It might not be, though. I don't really see anything significant. Oh, Rainey up to superstar. That's significant. They're an 86 overall, and I'm sure we will find a way to lose. Patriots, Bears, Super Bowl. Can we win a 10th? That's where we are right now. Nine Super Bowl victories. Looking for double digits. It's not a good start. Already down, but we take the lead 10 to 7 into the second quarter. Holding on. Defense playing great. 17 7, New England. Second half action. The Bears cannot score. It's 20 to 14 now. They're finally on the board here in the second half, and they've actually taken the lead, but we grab it right back. 26 21. Bears. Two minute offense on our side of the 50. Oh my goodness, that's not good. If you, if you press uh, Y and you're not in position to make the interception, you pay for it dearly. We found out there. What is happening? What is this camera angle? We're locked, but under pressure's the quarterback, and down he goes. It's Cummins. Three and a half sacks for him in this game. What a performance, and the quarterback will run. Second and 21, and they run with the QB. They're going down the field. It's incomplete. Fourth and 20, game on the line, Super Bowl on the line, quarterback throws out of bounds, incomplete, a first down ends it. Second and seven runs, you're only seeing runs here, only runs, one time out left for Chicago. Third and four, they need a stop, we will likely punt if we don't get it here. Broken tackle, Mooney fighting for it, and he got it. Final timeout called by Chicago. Doesn't matter. It's all over. Super Bowl number 10 for the Patriots. America loses when the Patriots win, right? Isn't that ironic with a name like the Patriots? But a 10th Super Bowl, and we're looking for one more, I believe, as we go into the final year of the rebuild. Season recap. No Patriots involved in the yearly awards other than the Super Bowl victory. P.J. Griffith wins Super Bowl MVP, the converted safety. Like to see it. a lot of bucks, a lot of Niners in there. Do we need to re-sign anybody? Brian Wayne. Yeah, that's somebody. We do have 39 mil in cap room now, though. So it's doable. Let's just bring him back. Not interested in signing, not interested in caring. Your franchise tagged. Opt out. Sit out, hold out, don't care. Free agency. Don't really need anything here. I mean, Marcus Cleveland, this corner, is interested. We very much do not have the money. I don't think there's any way we can get this guy. But we're going to go ahead and lowball him. And if he wants to win a championship, he'll sign on. If not, he'll go elsewhere. I think there's a chance we get him. And the chance is now zero. He's not, he's not going to be signing with us. We do need a kicker and a punter, though. Let's just sign the best ones available. NFL Draft, can we get one difference maker to change our 
uh, franchise. I mean, I, I don't want to change because we're actually really good. Sick corner. I don't really need him. But is he good enough to take? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Ran in the four twos. I'm in. Would be nice to have that number one overall pick right around now, which we uh, do not have, clearly. Griffin is regressing. So just getting a good fourth one, and I feel like is kind of a good move. A one this year, and then a one and a two next year gets us number one overall to take a corner. That's never happened before. Probably never will. Sean Hooker, you'd be shocked. Another Ohio State player. Welcome to the team. Can really, really run. With A press, B man, or B zone coverage, and a man-to-man -man archetype, probably his A man. He's going to be a freak. 95 speed, and uh, surely close to 80 man end zone. I'm in. CPU can deal with the rest. 82 overall. Pretty good. Pretty good. Hopefully superstar X-Factor. Man is 81. Zone coverage is 77. Press is near 90. High 80s right out of the draft. I think he might be generational just because of that reason alone. 80 hit power? That's really good. That's That could be like, you know, the, the press archetype. Like Mel Blunt or something. I don't know. He is the highest overall player in the class. And then the next two are safeties. That went in the second round. Good for them. All right, pretty sweet team. I have no idea what this X-Factor ability is. Kind of reminds me of two arrowheads crossing. I thought of like Travis Kelsey and the Chiefs. But um, they're two spears. I don't really... Is that good? Everyone told me to put this on Nick Duvall for running backs to be really good. Eh, I don't know. I'll leave it, I guess. 15 and 2, the best season to date. The entire video, we finally have a 15 win season. I think this is the first time we've even won 14 or 13 even. Drew Robbins, great season. Bryson Mooney was pretty good. Receiving. Landry Edwards, very interesting. Although Brian Wayne led the way. Joey Allen is not in the slot. So he's not producing as much as some of the other options. But if we put him in the slot, which we might do next year, we, if we might do one more year, I think, to get to uh, 2042. Holy cow. Um, 18 tackles for loss for Rainey, 17 for Jimmy Cummins, who had 26 and a half sacks. He's exploding all over the place. Cummins is absolutely unhinged. And I'm not going to stop. JD Cannon, four interceptions. Good stuff. You know, the fact that when you look at our defense and we have we have Cummins and Cannon, the Cummins Cannon, aka my well, anyway, divisional round of the playoffs, we will be facing the Denver Broncos. And Sean Hooker, who we drafted, does have superstar X Factor. Worthwhile draft pick, I would say. The Broncos are a team that could beat us. Snuck into the playoffs, 89 overall team. I'm a little bit worried about this one, and it's 52 nothing. Okay. Well, that's the most impressive win of the entire video. We only allowed 16.3 points per game this year. Number seven scoring offense. I mean, pretty incredible. Conference championship. Can we beat the Chargers? I like simulating to the Super Bowl more than I like just simulating the week. I don't know why, but I feel like we have better success when we do that. I feel like we have better success when we simulate more weeks at once. Doesn't work this time, though. We get knocked out, and it's a California Super Bowl. Okay, last season, players ready to negotiate. Joey Allen. Brian Wayne is here again. Oh, that, oh, gosh. Okay, we have to make a decision. And it's going to be Joey Allen. Easy decision. Brian Wayne, we could tag. Tremaine Staley's here. Ethan Boston. Oh, we have no money, by the way. That's no good. So we have to decide what's more important. These receivers... Probably not. Ethan Boston's going to be big, but I think it's Brian Rainey, to be honest. Uh, I mean, can we really afford to lose all of our receivers, not named Joey Allen, or really just two? I don't really like that. Who are you, you little meatball? Enrique Baptiste has a head. I mean, that thing looks like it weighs about 50 pounds, maybe more. He is interesting. Superstar Dev. It's not good enough to start, though. It's just not. And also, Averill. We have random Superstar Dev players. Alan Averill looks kind of good, to be honest. Block shedding's good. Why is he bad? Awareness? Play rec? Is that it? But I think keeping Rainey is going to be 
really, really important for us. I don't know. We are going to get worse this, this year, no matter what. No matter what. Griffin has got to go. I'm not going to cut him. The penalty is massive. Holy. I don't know. I don't really know what we can do here. It's going to be... Pick one player I want to keep. And low ball and then franchise tag. How much is Ethan Boston going to be? Too expensive. Brian Rainey going to test free agency, but no, he isn't because I'm franchise tagging him. And that uh, handcuffs us. We can't do anything else. So we're going to have to draft a receiver. We pick it, what, 31, did it say? 30. Okay, because we, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I, I didn't know if we had somebody else's pick. But we're going to have to uh, draft a receiver here because we need the depth really, really badly. And we got some okay options. Mike Jacobs, maybe. His catch and traffic's bad, but I think everything else is pretty good. Elite speed, ran 424, can never have enough speed. A spectacular catch. Another 99 speed player. Good addition. And he's a 76 overall. It's a really good pick at the back end of the third round, or back into the first round here. Number one overall player was a running back taken at number one overall. It reminds me of Ricky Williams. It's Grant Sims from USF. Uh, Ricky probably didn't look anything like this out of the draft attribute wise 99 juke move though okay but yeah i mean the saints <laughs> trading everything to take a running back that high kind of fun although ricky was like number three number four in the draft maybe number five hook him of course but uh yeah this is a pretty good class from what i can tell maybe not amazing but some really good players and we got a top five talent yeah it looks like it oh the giants just dropped a pick that would end the game Oh, man. That's tough. We got Doug Baldwin. Who's this? Our receivers are not as good as I would like them to be, but that's okay. Jacobs is going to go off. Hopefully a superstar dev. Defensively, I mean, it's an interesting group. That's for sure. Uh, Griffith, I can't really trade, but I, I, I maybe, I don't know. I mean, last season, we're really going for it. Griffin, I'm going to use to trade for a linebacker. And this linebacker has to be exceedingly cheap. We can basically not afford anything. All right, Julian Collins, 24-year-old middle linebacker from the Cowboys. Now, can we get any anything pick-wise from them? Projected number 12. Now, this is not going to go through. But if we added a pick, maybe it would. 32 projected. Second's not going to get it done either. We might not even be able to trade for this guy straight up. Oh, we can. All right, Griffin for Collins straight up. And I'm not done. I want a better second receiver. So Baldwin will be traded. End of first round pick, and I need a better receiver. What are my offers? Not that. We are trading a first round pick and Haynes instead of Baldwin for Mac Cheeks. I remember Mac Cheeks. I'm not sure if you do. We definitely consider drafting him. I think he went at number 21 overall in that year, and we just were not in position to get him. All right, but this team looking pretty good. Jaden Rhodes looking a bit different from Giants franchise. Also, game on the line in uh, Giants Commanders, fourth and goal. Heineke drops back to throw, sitting in the pocket. Has plenty of time. Feels like my Giants franchise. Lobs, end zone. Incomplete. Giants should win. Let's go. We have superstar dev all over this defense, I'd love for Hooker to be starting in some capacity, but we just have such great depth that that's just not going to happen. Got a great team. I think I'm going to put our X Factor in the slot. And other than that, I will see you for the playoffs. This should be a playoff team. Yeah, Joey Allen in the slot. Here we go. Playoff time. Let's get it. Now, it might have been actually a little bit of pass interference by Darnay Holmes. I don't know. I didn't see it. I wasn't watching. <laughs> Look clean to me. And there's a 14 win uh, season. 14 and 3 go the New England Patriots. Drew Robbins. Not doing anything crazy. I mean, this is not a good year. Rushing. Bryson Mooney was better. Nearly 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns. Receiving Joey Allen, 1,300 on the nose and 11 TDs. Landry Edwards, great season at tight end. Mac Cheeks, pretty good. Mike Jacobs, pretty good. As a rookie, eight touchdowns. His dev trait is only star. It usually is, but 99 speed. We'll take it. Defensively, I mean, 
Jimmy Cummins might be the best of all time. 24 and a half sacks again. 14 and a half for Rainey, 13 for Hendricks. Cummins is just, he's exploded onto the scene. And listen, opposing teams going to need tissues because you're going to have to be cleaning up your quarterback. I, I don't know. Um, really good stuff here. I mean, this is a crazy career and he's only 27. Think about this. Jimmy Cummins here, split career with Indianapolis and uh, New England. These four years with New England, obviously nuts. 126 sacks and he is 27 years old. Absolutely absurd. Absurd career. Five years, 126 sacks. <laughs> it's stupid, really. And when you look at the overinflated sack numbers in simulation, Gantt, by the way, 233, pretty sweet. Uh, Greg Rousseau is 265. But Brian Burns has 177. The record in real life is Bruce Smith with 200, and then Reggie White with 198. Brian Burns is on the list with 177. After five seasons, or is it six? And they're just not counting it? At 27 years old, he's 126. He's probably two or three years away from making the list in the top 10 for sacks all time. Unbelievable. Chiefs, Patriots, divisional. Upgrade and sim. And we beat the Chiefs, and we have improved tremendously over time. It's good to see. Mike Jacobs will go up to an 80 overall, and we'll play the Raiders in the conference championship. You know, the Raiders and Patriots have had some pretty big playoff matchups all time. One really comes to mind in the early 2000s. You guys may or may not remember that. And uh, the Raiders are maybe rightfully moving on this time to end the video. Man, I mean, I barely or don't even remember the tuck rules. Like 2002, dude, I was like four or five. So <laughs> yeah, long time ago. But Packers end up winning the Super Bowl anyway. Brett Favre beats Rich Gannon. Maybe he was a quarterback that year. And uh, Jimmy Cummins, another Defensive Player of the Year. But that's going to do it for this 20-year rebuild. Please hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Hit that like button if you like the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.